24 года Бронеру, метр 69, 177 сантиметров размах рук, 63 килограмма. Суровый, мексиканский, точнее американский, наверняка с мексиканскими корнями боксер. Ну, а это, как обычно, со своей щелкой. Шоумен, это уже традиционная щетка. Возмутитель спокойствия. Танцор Адриан Бране. Сейчас посмотрим после Майдана, как он себя чувствует. Да, очень интересно, кстати, как у него психологическая устойчивость. Ты не поверишь, но свою карьеру Эдриан начинал в первом полулегком весе, это 59 килограмм. Там он стал чемпионом, там он какое-то время подчемпионил. Бой хороший с Элоем Перрисом. Бранер тогда в четвертом нокаутом. Дрался он с Антонио де Марко, был замечательный поединок. Антонио де Марко подвел его мексиканский мачизм. Там было избиение на выборы. Да. Пожалуйста, а-ля Флойд Мейвезер. Стойка. Интересные носки. Он со своей фотографией одел. Да. Бой за титул WBC в легком весе. Бывалым боксером. Также эпатажным. Вот категория боксирует. Бронер не его вес. Все-таки 66 килограмм. Кстати, смотри, Бронер идет вперед, потому что все предыдущие... Он работал как контрпанчер. То есть обычно он вытягивал на себя соперников, ловил их. Из... Руки позволяют, да. Из... Ну, тут да, тут, видимо, просто он, он так прикинул, что соперник ну, немножечко другой. Малина, да, ему сложно, конечно. Подобраться. Ну, смотри, что-то иногда проходит у него на ближней дистанции. Мархас Хименес опытный. По-моему, аргентинец. Вот Хименес. Это была такая определенная жертва. Бросили его под какую-то. Веселый парень. Веселый парень, наверное. Работает уже на выбор, пожалуйста. Сначала позиционировался как такой разминочный, проходной, процедурный для Бронера. Все эти ребята стараются. Любители, так сказать, олдскула могут посетовать, Леонардо, что те времена... Семь раз дрались. Чуть ли не каждые выходные. Да, спокойно могли... О, Ух ты! Я еще заметил с боя с Майдана. Что... И у Адриана Бронера. И опять... Да. Той тактики, которая ему практически до первого поражения Вы вошли. Обратить внимание. Но тут такой, слушай, такой считают, на каутером у него на 17 побед всего 7. Отлично, друзья! У нас начинается ММА. Я не знаю, что это. Разозлился Карлос Малина. Побежал вперед. Одной фразой из... из... Я не помню, какой это был фильм. Соберись. Суетица, Эдриан. Да. Ну, тут правильно, да. Третий раунд у нас, дорогие друзья. И не сказать, что... Однозначно, У меня почему-то складывается такое свое сугубо личное мнение, что если бы на самом деле, как Бронер считается маленьким флойдом... Несколько секунд до этого. Эдриан. Не боится Малина. Идет спокойненько вперед. Ох. Все равно психологическое есть это у меня. Молодец. Молодец. Все равно закрадывает. Как безусловный рефлекс у некоторых людей остается. Ну, можно вспомнить... Э, ага. Ой. Так вот еще умеет Эдриан Бронер. Прогибом. Да. Может быть, в нем великий дзюдоист погиб. Вот тут как раз мы видели на выходе из клинча справа. Интересно, что вам советуют работать. Малинис кричат из его угла. Такой сумбурная атака, но 
кое-что даже доносит Карна сделать. Обмануть, пофинтить. Я обратил внимание, что между боями Брана смотрел передачу его лэксет. По-моему, перед Мэйвезер и Вайрос. Там еще смеялся, вот там, смотрите, какой он плотненький. Ну, видимо, ни в чем себе не отказывает. А вспомни, как выглядит тоже... Как выглядел, точнее, тоже промоутер. Кстати говоря, это, это отдельная песня. Кстати, тоже был любитель потанцевать, выйти в ринг. Кошачьи шлепки, если так можно выразиться. Немножко грязи от Эдрина Бронера. Ну вот сейчас, в принципе, можно. Да? Такое ощущение, что там что-то такое пропустил Малина. Да, Даже не потрясал. Вот сейчас хлестка. Малина не стесняется, не смущается, если употреблять жаргонные выражения. И даже попадает, друзья. Немножко покряхтывая, начинает работать. Ну, ну, Кого-то тренера ругают у нас. По любителям такое было, что так не делают. Ну, наверное, сразу Девана Александра, который тоже очень ну, а Женский теннис это, это вообще это отдельная история. Отдельная история. Ну, больше, наверное, доносит Бронер все-таки, но для такого поединка и с таким соперником. Вот, пожалуйста, справа попадает. Карлусу нужно было... На. А вот, мало... а вот молодое вино у нас на ринге здесь. Фишки. Началось шоу. Пользу. Ну вот тут вот а еще. Так, ну, вот очень красиво себя ведет, да, публика как раз реагирует. Ну, уже, тут уже, да, уже гораздо больше людей советуют Эдрину Бронеру. Он в бело-зеленых трусах, в черных боксерках, и синих он в перчатках, в желто-голубых трусах, в желтых боксерках. Мнение, что может быть рисунок поединка Майдана Мэйвезер попадает да. сейчас э, с Хаттоном. Возможно. Такое мнение тоже бытовало, я читал. Бронера. Майдана понравился в том плане, что у него... Как нет удара у него такого плотного. Не может он попасть. Но я думаю, что полукрюком Карлос Малина ну, вот, выманивает на себя Бронер Малину. Опять начинает жаловаться. Так. Говорил в одном из интервью Бронер, как ко мне люди относятся, то есть то, что у меня там... Я есть, живу, как я хочу. Не да. молчали. Нет ничего хуже равнодушия. Да, да, наверное, его это в какой-то степени заводит, стимулирует. Быстренько все сделает. Но вот не получается быстренько. Не получается. Может быть, даже не считает за авторитетного боксера Бронер. Ну, кстати... Наверное, в честь. Меня бьют. лицу тоннажем уже Карлос Малина собрал, мне кажется. Видно, да. Мощный удар у Адрина Бронера 53,5 килограмм. Вот сейчас хорошо попадает. Немножечко показал прежнего Бронера, который... Вот, да. Вот это что было? Уже еще тот шоумен. Да. Но не в ринге. Это был поединок у Бернарда Хопкинса против Феликса Тринидада. Где флаги он сжег. Да, и... Ретировался от разъяренных пуэрториканских болельщиков. Если вспомнить... А у нас между тем восьмой раунд. В атаке Карлос Малина. Бронера. Не боится он абсолютно. Дебаши бой с Антонио де Марко. Там Бронер, конечно, выглядел совершенно да, по-другому, убедительно. И был такой... как я хотел. Да, конечно. Зрелище было кто еще? Бронера. Да, у Матиса удар пострашнее гораздо, чем у Малины. Гораздо. С удовольствием посмотрел бой Бронера с Гарсией. А Дэнни Гарсия очень, очень даже хорошо. Да, попадает, да, что-то доносит, встречает, но тем не менее пропускает. Ничего сверху Бронера. Все меньше и меньше шансов на это. Все меньше и меньше Там шансов. Наша... Я думаю, дотерпит он все равно всю дистанцию. Но он, он, он. 
Все ребята из Мексики, конечно. Ты смотри, кстати, Эльдар уходит. Кто знает. В своем репертуаре. Эдриан. Дает бэтбоя. Эдриан Бранер. А теперь, а теперь дает двоечку по малине. Чего не делает? Ну Такого так. Сверхъестественного. Да. Ну, то есть, да, тут он, тут он пора. Пожалуйста. Смотри, как я умею. Вроде и попадает много. Мне кажется, Эдриан, ну тут же главная звезда в этом поединке. Звездочка. Звездочка, да. Звездочка, пародирующая звезду. Какой-то из 10 раунда. В очень приличном состоянии. Да, и вот смотрите, что делает. Смотрите-ка. Разъезжая удары, загорелое тело Эдриана Бронера. В принципе, левая рука да, у Малин тоже опущена. И почему бы Бронеру не похлестать справа? Попробовать это. Ну вот неплохая сейчас серия от Бронера. Ну вот, справа попадает же. Ну, может, быть, может быть, еще попробовать. Карлос Малина. И выглядел очень неплохо. Стоило. Не испугался, да. И вот смотрите, сейчас как смело он бросается. Акилев. Получается гемотомка под левым глазом у Карлоса Малина. Не нокаутирующим, но тем не менее сказываются удары Адрина Бронера. Скорость, конечно, у Адрина никуда не ушла. Есть какая-то она тоже присутствует. Ну, сейчас, может, продышался этот бой, следующий будет по-другому. Ну, кстати, демонстрируется, надо отдать должное, демонстрирует джентльменское поведение. Нет. Внимание на ринг и сейчас, видимо, объявят. Адриан, ну, как-то не особо доволен он с тобой. Ну, да. Ты победы. Отбоксировал. And I referenced the weight for Adrian Broner. And it's very important because we talked about at the top of the show the fact. Introducing you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks, hailing from Durban, Russia. He weighed in at 139 pounds and has a record of 19 wins, one loss, with nine wins coming by way of knockout in his fourth world title bout. Please welcome the IBF number five rank contender and the former WBA super lightweight champion of the world, introducing Khabib. his opponent across the ring on my left fighting out of the blue corner wearing black trunks with orange trim fighting out of and representing his hometown of Cincinnati Ohio he weighed in at a trim and ready 138 and one half pounds his record stands at 30 wins two losses one no contest with 22 wins coming by way of knockout tonight seeking his fourth world title he is currently ranked the WBA number two introducing Adrian the problem Broner. and I referenced the weight for Adrian Broner and it's very important because we talked about at the top of the show the fact that the trunks are good we want to protect yourself at all times Ohio Athletic Commission has Doc, a junior the task of overseeing this schedule 12 with five wins inside the distance up two and one in championship affairs with one win inside the bell and round one Broner sporting the colors of his hometown NFL since it samples out a minute 30 left oh, in the, but that debated to this day He's trying to punch, land that punch in the cover. Landing a left hook in the 12th and final round. All about business in boxing here tonight. Alec Verdiev going on. Verdiev. He's is getting yeah. closer. He's getting closer, but he can't bank on it. <laughs> There's thrown on the ropes where it gives you the body. And Paulie landed many oh. body shots. Nice cut nice. to that close shelf. And he's not able to punch off that. Ian Bono will play that with you all day, and he's good at that. He's good at it. This is the pace that Broner wants, clearly. There's nice body work by El 
uh, Alex Verdiaz. He likes to pot shot you and keep those single shots going. So if you're going to beat him, he's very good at it. Would you like to see him throw combinations? Those little counters in there. Nice right uppercut by Broman. Like Verdiaz has been successful in scoring to the body with that left hand. Goes to the uppercut, come with the hook, put the combination in the I have a couple of moments where you see him pawing with the jab and is able to get the straight right hand in and then go downstairs. In the last round, using the uppercut very effectively on the inside. That's a point. Going into hostile territory. Coming off a career long layoff. Nice right hand by Alec Verdiev. He has an issue on the inside. He's finding jab. Picking up. That first and second shot, it's going to be very difficult to do that. There's a nice jab from Broner. What do they say about sleeping dog? And this pot shot game, Broner will play with you for 20 rounds if you want to go at it. The southpaw, Lekverdiev, going over the top with a right. Yeah, the right, right hook. Uh, I'm so, the right hook is going to end up being a... He gets inside. The work is good. He has to keep working, going, punch, going to the bottom. Ended up being a pretty good round for him, unleashing that right hook. Now, he's working, trying, trying for to... another right hook, but Broner was able to land the straight right hand, and that's a punch... I mean, for a certain trinket at 140 pounds. Nice right. counter. Nice counter. Another for Diab. Here's the important point. Aggressive he's in terms of his numbers. So far in this fight, he's only he's throwing only a few work right. in the last 20 seconds. Oh, he's got to be consistent. Stinging counter right hand by Broner. Mayweather has shoulder roll. A lot of people wish he wouldn't. He'd go Getting back. to that third and fourth punch in the combination. Oh, another one. Just a piston-like right hand. So his power was at 130-135. Another stinging right hand by Broner. Alec Verdiev. You know what I'm saying? Give me that water. Give me one more. Keep it in. Which is the straight right. And of course, against the South Pole, he's attacking. And Diab has not been doing much in this fight. That right hand will get there. Now going to the body, counter shots though from Broner. That right hand continues to find its target. Fourth punch against Broner. He goes defensive, so nothing's going to come back at you. Yeah, exactly. But Broner doing a See? good job of blocking the majority of those shots by the left hand. But now going upstairs. But again, yeah, but he yeah. seems to be, you're right, and hasn't paid the price yet. A little shot in Broner. And there's another right cross under a minute left in the fifth. And you can see he can't mesmerize you with these different looks he gives you. He gives you that rhythm. You just got to knock. Jab right hand lead by Broner. Then he eats a short right from Malik Verdiev now working the body. Good counter right in there from Adrian Broner. Seven pounds. And Porter taking to Instagram to. You force Broner to go defensive. Not only do you force him to go defensive, you also. Broner almost seemingly putting himself in that corner. There he eats a short left, but again, trouble up with that right hook a lot. There it is to the body. Should have come with it to the head. He's capable. Now Broder picking up the pace in terms of out, but they're both exchanging here. This is better as creating. If you're gonna stay in range of Broner, either you get off or you come and you or you step back and not been a punch he has used a lot in this fight. Great, great champion. There's a right hand from Broner. It's round six. The fans in Cincy enjoying every good stuff. Not even on their feet after those fistic fireworks. There would be a firefight broke breaking out, and both men landing, throwing and landing big shots. The uppercut, a huge weapon for Broner by Alex Verdiev, but he did land them. And then later on, Broner coming forward, landing the big Mo, uh, shot. Five rounds to one for Broner. The right uppercut is clearly the best punch. From a psychological in standpoint, Alex Verdiev right now is not in a good position. His hand, of course, with that shoulder roll. Midway yes. point. Can't throw these single shots. It's a nice shot, and then the hook is important. And then you just set up the hook. Absolutely. You know? Yes, precise. Be creative in the ways you're going to set up your hook and set your traps for it. In round seven, now the up going to the body. Coming in, and that's part of the reason. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Man, those punches are right there. That's beginning to show signs of the Adrian Broder we've seen in the past. And you got just more picking him up with the jab. Sorry, Paul. He's got more problems than lacking power. Oh. He's, uh, he's also. Adrian Broner with 22 of his 30 wins. Fans of Cincinnati, but Alec Verdiev again has never. And now he's. Now Broner's talking to Pauli Malinaji here at ringside. A lot of it turns a lot of people off, but when when the Adrian is in this. Was the chant of USA? <laughs> I thought it was disrespectful. Al. We saw it in the eighth. There's a left hook countered by Alec Verdiev. Verdiev still on the attack, and yet. Broner now asking uh, other people at ringside, what's up? 
right there. At that point. Well, he's, he's been telling them to move his head and throw combinations. And that's what I'm telling you. He is getting marked up. You never know. He's coming now, back now. It, it lands. Yeah, and it now lands. here he is. But a lot of those shots blocked. But again, the problem is exactly. he's, he's got to use the right hook in the midst of combination I, punching. I agree. But he's got to, that punch needs to be. But he obviously has heeded the advice of his. We talked about it at the beginning. Dropping left hand from Broner's Alec Verdia chases him. Oh, oh there's that wow. And even while he took the walk, stop and throw the next like, combination. Like Steve Farhood said, that right uppercut has been his bread and butter when it comes to his power shots. And like Verdia working the butt. Well, would, I wouldn't go that far. He said fatigue. <laughs> A minute remaining in the tenth. And again, winding up with the right uppercut, lands the jab. Broner, the pace, the crowd, building crescendo, sensing something. But there, Alec Verdia showing what he's made of. Once Alec Verdia pushed him back, he did not punch. And the, and, and the thing about Alec Verdia is the tap rounds. Right, right hand lands for Broner. Nice. Hold that. So here at the U.S. Bank. And they exchange here with the career of Adrian the Problem Broner. In the 11th. You can't question the heart of Alec Verdia, but 28 days away from home. Now here the head movement's really good from Alec Verdia. That's the that's the thing we were looking for him to do a lot of Verdia. Right hand to the body and Malek Verdia now left and Broder on the verge of perhaps Alec Verdia and yet Alec Verdia standing toss. Very good show. She, now especially at this point in the fight, being tired, <coughs> throwing more arms on the pop. And now with 10 remains, all Adrian, the problem broner, with three minutes remaining in this fight. Good right hand by Alex for the final round, but he needs to show the Oh, it's Radiev is one and one in 12 rounds. Alphabet fight. organization. Yeah, he's 48 and 0 with two knockouts, guys. Yeah. I heard he's a pretty good boxer. I mean, he's regained some luster with some pretty big names, and yes, I think Broner against him. He's going to beat all of them, but he certainly has proven that at 140 he could be a good fight. Adrian Broner to close the show in front of his hometown good crowd. Shot. Good body shot in hand. Left hook, right uppercut. Broner, that's enough. Harvey the Doc referee, Joe, Harvey Doc Jr. stops the fight. Aaron Broner. Improves to 31 and champion 2. And the new WBA Super Lightweight Champion of the World, Adrian the Problem Broner. Okay, gentlemen. The rules in the dressing room. I want you. to read her touch yourself at all. Will be my command. God bless you both. Touch up. The two touch gloves. Alvarez. Now the words are over. And this you could is say what the biggest of Alvarez's career as well. And the action underway. Who's going to be the first to make a scoring? Games blazing in the early stages. Although, having said that, if he gets the, the opportunity. has got to avoid moving back onto the ropes. Got to box and ring. Nearly two minutes gone, and that's the, the right hand from Canelo Alvarez. Got a little bit better. He's got those, that, that nervousness um, out of his system, should I say, in that opening round. But that plans can actually handle that pressure and keep his man at distance behind that. Love Alvarez connecting there. That time you hear the. But this is what he does, isn't it, Alvarez? He just gets closer and closer. Brilliant at closing the gap, and he's looking for an opportunity. Just keeping him at bay with those shots. Now he's got Plans to. Move. He'll be a sitting duck in many respects. He's got to move. It makes things more awkward for Alvarez. The Billy Joe Saunders style, trying to frustrate his opponent. Maybe Danny Jacobs when he's still left hands already in this round. That's good again though from Plant. That first Caleb Plant. That's where he's got to move. Can't afford to stay there. Quite seen the solution but he'll said i'll be patient i'll wait yeah he's a very patient that's not right hand 
every trainer I've ever spoken to that a fighter against him tells you what's going to happen. They think they've got the remedy. You have class. That's that's just absolutely brilliant. So how did you do that now? Walks his opponents down. And that's why it's okay having the height and reach, but you've got to put Slightly something in Plant's favour. But a long way to go. That's a nice little shot inside from Plant's left hand. And that's a bit better with his movement, moving off to his right, away from that right, right hand. He just changed the angle there, didn't he? You thought a jab was coming out, but he just... Went this is where Plant has got to keep him at bay and start hitting him with some big shots. He's there to be it, Alvarez, but Plant is not... to it. Alvarez only just missing with that, that jab, hard to detect, and again, he's had him six. Couple of headshots as they came out of it. Well, we're coming towards the end of this third round. Briefly, Richie. Yeah, the distance, of course. Judges will determine. He's making a decent start, but he's got the gears, because Alvarez, that's what he will do. Eventually get to this man. Alvarez into range. Solid body shot. You've got to move. Keep the movement going. You hold your feet against this fella on the ropes, and he's going to punch a hole through you. You've got to hit. You've got to move. Make it all. But he's finding Plant as tricky as Plant predicted he would. For once, forcing the Mexican back a little. Alvarez into it. Keeps across and closes the gap down as um, Plant is trying to move off to the side. Oh, that's a good shot. Again. Alvarez, you hold your feet, you go back onto the ropes, and you just take your eye off the ball. Be fatal he's, because he's very, very explosive on the inside, is Canelo Alvarez. Punch yet in this round. Until a little bit desperate with his work, maybe. But it's the movement that's important from Plant. Load up on the left hook. throws even if it doesn't land clearly the crowd go absolutely berserk give credit to plant making things awkward he hasn't hurt Alvarez but he's certainly making things difficult and awkward for... well, that's good he's for okay it hasn't thrown many right hands I've seen him grimace he's really caught him clean unless you caught him on the back of the head in one of those shots he threw from the ropes up against more. those left hooks Rich because that's the way he's going he's moving away to his you know, he's trying to get away from, from, the, from the dangerous shots that are coming Most in. of Alvarez attacks in that round. And again, it's a close one, Richie. It was a close round. I had it even, actually, John. Had it and Plant, well, he'll think that he's doing it. It's good work from Plant, but you just sense that around. He dips the head. Occasionally, the, he can, can hit the forehead with a shot. Mayweather, of course, cope with this man. He's coming into range more. Yeah, and this is where Caleb Plant has got to throw more shots. He's better from Canelo, but Plant's holding his feet. He's allowed... Another solid shot from Alvarez. And, a clear and again, he's getting closer and closer, and Plant's feet are, are slowing down more and more, John. It's a testing night as long as Plant keeps moving. That's why the crowd are getting a little bit frustrated here in their toe-to-toe -to -toe boxing. That's why Plant's got to keep the movement. He's done a pretty fair job of avoiding... Just making things awkward, that's why you see Alvarez now just quickening the feet up a little bit. He's got to get closer. So at some point, the power shots like that from Alvarez would surely take their toll. He's got to throw more shots, but Plant quite content to stay at range, try and keep his man on the end of that jab to avoid the shots as he comes forward. Some of the Mexican fans are jeering. They want to see Plant stand and go toe-to-toe yeah, -to -toe with him. You box your fight. And like I said before, Billy Joe Saunders made it very Space. awkward. Get him into the corner and landing a solid left hand. Stay out of the corners, keep the movement going. And it's not bad boxing, this. The head movement wasn't really there. And it's, it's Plant that seems to be gaining uh, confidence now. So this has uh, swung round again to be growing in, in Former journalist. Now working... In the PR side of the game, which so speaking, John, you've been coming here long enough to know the score. That's better from in this contest. And they just decided to stand and trade. But look at that from Plant. 
Fast hands, moment of embarrassment for Alvarez. Powerful body shots. Plant acts as though it was. Did you have that, Richie? Well, I had it for Plant again. I mean, I got Plant ahead now, but uh, I thought Plant got it. You know what we said about two? There's a little bit of frustration in Canelo's work, and there's certainly is a bit of frustration in his work to the body. You've got to give Plant a lot of credit. You know, whether or not he's going to be getting the verdict here as a very real fighter in the super middleweight division. In the previous uh, round, John, and again he started this one. He doesn't want to get his boxing very well on the outside, making things very awkward. And Canelo, Alvarez now is getting to him. There almost has to be a bit of desperation for Alvarez. He's got to find big shots. That was a right, that right hand, but to slow those feet down, that's what he may have to do. Hurt his opponent. Phenomenal condition, and that conditioning is now being tested right to the hilt. Alvarez in this round. Yeah, he can't get to him, can he? But again, Caleb Plant just making the mistakes of holding the feet. Got to keep moving. Incidentally, if you'll, you'll have your own idea watching at home, we've just had a little straw poll Very about much. in the balance, in the 10th round. And a lot of people thought it would have ended by now. Big right. body. This up to now, again, it's another close round. Alvarez. Plant has done a great job in, in quieting this crowd. That was always going to be important, and he's done that. Alvarez looking to create history. But Plant also, oh, good shot from Alvarez. He's found that to his gone. It was the left hand, and it's taken some time to come. But there in the 11th round, there it is, and a big left to try and clear his head. But yes, it's the left hook, and he's got him again, John. He's going to take him out right now, Alvarez. Plant has to find a way to hold on to try and stifle him, but he can't. And down he goes, Alvarez has done it. It took a long time to come, but when it came, Alvarez becomes the undisputed world by 11th round knockout. Caleb Plant, a tremendous night. But when he, he just switched off, paid the price, and now he's been knocked out. He's been a bit too confident. He's, yeah. taken, the, he's taken the first 20 seconds, 30 seconds. There's a huge amount of respect right now between these two warriors. Absolutely, Caleb Plant would find this contest very difficult. Richie, let me just tell Steve's uh, thoughts on this one. The judges, who, and they all had Canelo in control. The judges maybe had it only towards. Well, the, the one judge had it was the Patricia, Patricia Jarman, who had it only two points. OK, I don't four think that was up. Let me tell you something. That was a close fight. Let's, for, let's forget the scores for a moment. Let's savour what they're savouring here. The it's finish. brought there, that left hook, and then following that up with a savage right uppercut. Yeah, tremendous work. And, um, you know, you get you find the left hook. This is the first left hook. What a shot that was. Crowd stay, it's not very good at all because they obviously don't appreciate Steve any boxing on the back foot, and, and there's more than one way to skin a cat. And that showed heart and bravery. He's such a well respected um, champion, and uh, obviously the crowd love him here, but he is a, a terrific fighter. Raul Canelo Alvarez! Dale Little Tate. Gennady Golovkin against David Lemieux. It's now or never for Golovkin as he himself... And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner with his head trainer, Mark Ramsey, with 27 KOs in three rounds or less. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada, presenting the reigning, defending IBF middleweight champion of the world, Mesdames et Messieurs, David... Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, with head trainer Abel Sanchez, standing five feet ten and a half, with 17 KOs in three rounds or less, and he has won 20 consecutive fights by knockout. He's recognized with having the greatest KO percentage in middleweight championship history, from Karaganda, Kazakhstan, in California, USA, the reigning defending undefeated interim WBC, IBO, WBA, middleweight champion of the world, Gennady 
Triple G. Good evening, gentlemen. You both see this. Everything below the letters here is going to be low. Tap it up. Here we go. In a sports that seen action, this is the most important Triple G's day. The official attendance in the garden tonight. And here we go. Any one punch could end this fight at He's any moment. Two fighters because Lemieux isn't much of a jabber. He works. Lemieux reaching with a body He's shot. not letting Lemieux in. That jab, jab, make him negate that first. I'm box now. As he's landing his jab, and Lemieux hasn't landed much of anything. So keeping him back. Jab, right hand. Take Lemieux out of the fight early by backing him up with that jab, making him fight uncharacteristically of and himself. You see the amazing number already from box He's landed more than 20 jabs in the round. He has to load up on the home run left hook. He's done it once. Right hand to the body by Golovkin. Hasn't really tried to get close. Another body shot for Lemieux. Right. But all in all, right over with the jabs, okay? Yeah. Very good work. Very good work. You okay? Okay. Fina attack up. His relationship with Russ Amber and brought in Ramsey and the general consensus. Lemieux trying to be more aggressive in this round. Lands a jab. And gets in hand with 26 jabs in round one, which is simply colossal. Of course, we knew that. Though. Yep, he's outclassed me by hook. The first oh. body shot from Triple G will be interesting, too. Look at the jab. Right hand. You trying various ways of trying to get past the jab. Hasn't managed to do it with any. He's not missing. It's not a normal jab Golovkin hands. throws. Kind of like Kovalev's jab. It snaps. A little left hand. hook lands for Golovkin. Jab lands. Right hand was blocked, but knocked Lemieux back a little bit anyway. Golovkin almost it caught seems him. seems to me was able to roll it with his shoulder and make it glance off. Now yeah. the question is, will a frustrate coming in? Body shot by Golovkin. Right hand lands. Hand right lands. hands again. Knocks Lemieux into the ropes. Left hook for Golovkin. Right hand lands again. Phenomenal accuracy. Lemieux has never had to fight at this pace before in his life, I guarantee you. Hard right hand. Well, if the first round was good, this one was even better. You need to block him or go defensive. Then make him think outside inside, okay? Deep breath. Lemieux is trying to box to load up against Golovkin to at least give yourself a chance to land something big. This is just live by the gun, die by the gun. The best time for him to make bad decisions. Matthew Macklin was quite articulate, particularly by the jab. You got to give him for his first title defense. There's Lemieux trying to do it the right way he really coming wants in. wants to try to win it. And he's earned a lot of respect from Heaps coming. Flowing like water. Body shot. Jab again. Jab again. With that jab. A very calm David Lemieux. Agreed with us in the meeting yesterday. His amateur career is much deeper and prolific than mine. It's my job. Where well, he realizes he's going to get hit anyway, so he's saying almost, I may as well. Left hook. Both landed. All right. Then we land the one we want. Constantly working off of that jab. Attack with the right hand, then it's just a jab. To the face. Jab, jab to the face. Jab to the face. Punching hard so that Lemieux can't land a big punch on him and he can attack Lemieux first because three rounds so far it hasn't been a Gennady Golovkin Who has clearly won the what you're doing and then we'll pick out the moment at which you're gonna land the big shot How are you said three to nothing 30 to 27 Gennady Golovkin. You may say he's totally stupid. You know what's bothering me about this? He's walking in and he's getting blasted by a lot of murdering him I, I mean, if I were fighting uh, Golovkin, I get showing so far. Maybe Lemieux had a plan coming in. Times and maybe the middleweight division average. Five times the average of what okay. middleweight fighters throw with the jab. And that definitely is a game changer. And talk about getting hit. There was the left hook. And Lemieux is hurt. And here goes Golovkin. Looking to finish already in round up the middle. Left hook again. And here we go. And the Canadian star is hanging in. Gordon 
to Hoyle. Yeah, he's an even bigger underdog now. And it prompts Harold Letterman to say, for instance, I don't even think Lemieux has a plan. <laughs> Uppercut. What a round. Okay, okay short of breath. Short of breath. He throws a beautiful left hook while blocking a beautiful left hook at the same time. Lemieux throws. Gennady Golovkin has thoroughly dominated the first four rounds. There's a mouse. Every time beautiful. he does that, Max. Yeah, which is working perfectly. Landed some power shots in the last Taking round. on the aspect of a potential gradual beatdown. But of course, again. <laughs> Hard right hand for Golovkin. <laughs> Haven't said his name yet. Oh, good up. Hard right hand by Lemieux. Best punch of the fight so far. Vicious body shot with the right hand. Hard left. Golovkin punishing Lemieux for hitting him with a His feet are always spread, always set to accept or give one punch. side or another. And your feet will always be solid underneath oh, you. That's oh, that's punch of the Down goes Lemieux. And Golovkin hits while he was down. Six. Seven. Yeah. You're sure. First knockdown of the fight, okay. and Lemieux is a few seconds left in the round. That was only the second time, and Lemieux was by Marco Antonio Rubio. Shot. Okay, two two better than that. Okay, did you see what happened? Okay. He see Triple G just like uh, Chocolatito, head head, then followed by a beautiful bo body shot, left body shot. You saw him go down, but this was a bad punch. I would have put that punch. That's right. You already did get disqualified for that punch against Montel Griffin. Might have got banned from boxing for that. But for Golovkin, there's no tells you Golovkin's mentality here. He knows this is the fight that is the only the second time in his career he's tasted the canvas. There's another by Golovkin. Lemieux backs into the ropes. Golovkin's chin, and that momentarily shook up. Now Lemieux starting to throw. Caution to the wind increasingly chance and as Roy said earlier it may be too late Lemieux lands another He's one. coming into harm's way and giving Golovkin the chance to land power shots also There's the left. Somewhere Montel is watching I didn't do that <laughs> That's why I said we good now I thought Seen this well, that was a good body shot by, by uh, Lemieux just then, though. Might have been low, but it was a good idea. Yeah, it was a wonderful idea. And and more hittable after scoring a knockdown when he's following Lemieux up. out. Just who he is. Another big left hook lands for Lemieux. Even by itself. Uppercut for Lemieux. Golovkin catches him coming in with a left. Catches him. Oh, good up. And a right hand uppercut to punctuate the round. Some hard on Total punch even more, David. Okay, breathe. Here we go. Round seven begins. We're halfway through the fight. Harold is eyes. I mean, you know, it's, it's hurting his vision. And that a beautiful left jab, right hand combination. He gets an extra point for the knockdown in round number. You see that Lemieux is regarded as model handsome. That hair is important to him. That haircut is important. Not at all. Good hook by Triple G. Right hand by Triple G. His nose. And ruining his concentration. As I said, it was to do. Good body, Good body shot. shot by the by left hook, and then another one. Hard right hand by Golovkin. Lemieux is hurt against the ropes. Turn Lemieux sideways. And cornered. Another light, right hand lands. Not hard. But out of respect, it's hard to imagine there'll be a premature stoppage. I think he's Lemieux in the fight. But he can't get away from the jab. Ish. In the fight, ish. Try to have your blocking position, okay? Watch this send you twice. Try to be back. He's corner between rounds, watching him, trying to figure out whether there's a reason to stop. Of David Lemieux. Head still goes on. A lot of us never expected Lemieux to last this long. Not only surviving, but having chances with those big punches that he's throwing. All of that is a form of respect for right. David Lemieux's punching. Punches power. landed against the fighter. 
in a sense, that fighter guy he's fought. Exactly. Good way. Right hard hand. left hook. Hammers. Good right hand by Lemieux, but the uppercut by Golovkin drives him back into the ropes. The body shot hurt him again. Steve Mismatch, beat down, and Lemieux earned this date tonight. He beats him by Gennady Golovkin. Yes, it was. Is there a middleweight out there? IBO, WBA, interim WBC, middleweight champion of the world, Dame Gaspada, Gennady, Gennadyovich, Triple G. Of his generation, particularly dangerous. He's steely, he's conditioned as ever. Just the first round to fight his way back into getting a draw with Michael Hunter, who's a good fighter. He also beat Huey Fury last year. He's been a pro 15 years. He's fought everywhere. In so many countries. Mike, he's taken risk after risk when a lot of people would have sat there ranking and wait to get their shot. He hasn't done that. He stayed busy. Alexander Sasha Povietkin, Dillian, the body snatcher. Why? for the interim and the diamond belt more importantly the winner will fight for the golden on points and to AJ by knockout after causing havoc early faint now I think he's going to be, have to throw lots of feints tonight Dillian has got to mix that jab up vary the angle of it vary the power doesn't want to become readable or predictable with that slip inside it or shoot that right hand over the top he likes to get in close as well which has detonated on many he had a bad start against Michael Hunter out in Saudi Arabia. Hunter, a very different type to Light, White. Quick, skillful. I thought he won that night, Matt. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought uh, you know, Bebekin did do well to fight his way back in to get put down in the first. How much is left in the locker? Got a pretty good jab and great adaptability. All the uh, out of the ring problems to deal with last year. And, uh, only problem. Mark Tibbs no longer with him. Yeah, the jab has been good here though in the first round. He's been Povetkin just to get the read of it or the timing of his jab just yet. He's mixing it up and that's good to see. Povetkin gets to really get going. Always been stubborn and risky. You've got to make sure Dylan when he throws that jab out that he brings it quick Back. as it leaves because Povetkin's going to be dangerous with that right hand over the top. He's missing there, Povetkin. Quiet opener. The other so they're, they're wary early on. Good body shot from Dillian. Yeah, nice jab there from Dillian. Worked his jab well to slip inside already and trying to fire that right hand over the top of it. And he's had a tough one in with the likes of the times as he lands a great body shot there. Joseph Parker. He's watching intelligently here. He's taking his time. He's slipping and rolling under shots. He's landing a couple of really good bodies. Vekin certainly felt those. Good right hand there. Good lead right hand from Dillian. At the end of the first round, Povetkin as he went back to his corner. The key to this. And again, as Povetkin tries to engage, again, it's a cool start from Dillian White. Yeah, his jab's good. He's a stab. He's looks at his corner for the stretch. It's got to favor White. Yeah, but he's established his jab. He's found his range with it. Well, he's going up and down with that jab too, Dillian. He's not becoming predictable. He's jabbing the body as well, hooking as well. You see the left drift of Povetkin. It's very controlled this from White. In here. Good he's keeping his hands nice and high. He's getting his hands back at Dillian. He's not giving anything away. Don't, don't force nothing. Okay. You've got time. Don't force nothing. Okay. Stuff, okay. But he's missing by miles. Like Control him with the long jab. Okay. And bring that. 
Don't stop to him every time. Cold. Yeah, okay. 10 seconds. Okay. Come on. Okay. 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 Seconds out. Round three. From Dillian White behind the jab, using the body shots. Tight defense. Mind oh, really, really economical. He's wasting nothing. He's picking his punches, picking his shots. Good right hand there from him. Yeah, just beautiful push again of Pavek, and they were working on them in the corner. Very calm, just like the aptitude he's had all week in the fight camp bubble. Vekin will still be dangerous though. Yeah, those big. You see him moaning there to the referee. Good body punch up. Jab from Povetkin. Trying to wind back the clock. He's had a bit of an Indian summer to his career. But he's really improved since then. And, and these fights that he takes that are risky fights. That we're... He never says he's the best, but he does say he's the best at adapting away. He looks up to the likes of Evander Holyfield and George Foreman, who took on Dillian White. Yeah, he Pavetkin has, trying the body shots now, so but marking under the right eye of Pavetkin. He's being out-jabbed by Dillian White. Yeah, because he's being softened up, Pavetkin here. And another body shot from Dillian White. And again, he's trying to fight back with some fire. But White's heavy out. It's a terrific beginning, this. Do this but, at least once a year, even. Even after all COVID and everything to normal. Such an unbelievable setting. Yeah, good body shot there from Dillian. A few of those in as well. Don't have to lean into him. Don't have to, no. Corners, 10 seconds. The man he did so much good work with. It's been the best start to a fight I can remember for Dillian White in quite a while. Just landed two really good hands there. Beautiful shot. There's the speed as well. He's been spot on from the opening bell, Dillian White. And we wondered how much of the Povetkin after the close, close fight with Michael Hunt. Vladimir Klitschko had to get Povetkin down a few times, but couldn't stop him. Povetkin will keep swinging as he attempts the body shots. The pressure, young. Dillian White. Povetkin swinging and missing. That will expend energy sort of again in White. And I suggest if he can't. Yeah, I think he's trying to really trying to make it then in Dillian. Looking for the right hand over the top. Then he's looking for the left hook. Povetkin finding it hard to penetrate the defenses of Dillian. Povetkin, they've thrown a lot of body shots already. These two heavyweights, which is good to see. <laughs> Athletic, nimble, looking forward as he has done through his career. Oh, but a beautiful shot. countering shot from Dillian for the second time. Didn't see it coming. Timed sweetly. Just left up a quick counter. And how much longer will that yeah, good right hand there from Dillian. There's that second right hand, then the short left hook there. It's been a pretty much a punch perfect display from Dillian. There's that lovely left uppercut hook, kind of left hook. Yeah, coming. Left up. yeah. Tries to get his legs moving again. Povetkin, he'll give it everything he can. Really great, Alexander Povetkin. Beat David Price and Huey Fury recently, right over the top from White, but take nothing away from a very oh, good big shot. shot from Alexander. Extraordinary! Oh! And when Alexander Povetkin was going, you will ever see that is heavyweight. Seems so well, so controlled, so disciplined. His jab in the fourth, and then boom! One left uppercut. He threw the jab. He dipped to his left. I think that was the first time he threw an uppercut. He'd thrown body left to the Alexander Povetkin at nearly 41 will go forward and get the shot. Ruski Vitas, Alexander, Sasha Povetkin. Much left tonight after four rounds. He was shaking his head and everything, but he goes out and he... London calling north v south in the capital as two unbeaten giants collide in a real grudge match. Anthony... And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, officially weighing in at 17 stone, 7 pounds. Since capturing Olympic gold, he has a perfect professional record, 14 fights.
14 victories, 14 knockouts, and he holds the WBC International Championship. From London, the Olympic gold medal heavyweight fighting pride of the UK, the undefeated Commonwealth heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black and purple, official weight, 17 stone, 9 pounds. He holds the WBC International Silver Belt and has a perfect professional record, consisting of 16 fights, 16 victories, including 13 big wins by knockout, and his last 12 fights, all wins by KO. From Brixton, the undefeated Hillia, the body snatcher, Keep it clean, Greg, straight away. Both you watch your heads in close your balls. Touch clubs. Fowler in charge of 35 stone. Now it becomes very real. Seconds out, first round. Officially for the Commonwealth and the vacant in the amateurs. And they've certainly come out fast. And let's see what happens. But at the moment, Joshua very watchful. Now jabbing, and we get to see you. Uh, oh, the Joshua in the middle of that White in trouble already. Well, Take then. it to Joshua, you've got to think what you're doing, he's not thinking enough, he's far too reckless. We'll, we'll see how his mentality changes. Behind him, he's not set himself properly, a great shot from Joshua. that right hand coming. Yeah, he can't get into this kind of fight, keep Joshua at bay in some ways. But he's, he's not really, he's a powerhouse that gets people out of there. And I really don't see him uh, out and try and get Joshua. Joshua hasn't been tested. He's got he, to test. Dillian White can keep using the jab, but it'll keep Joshua busy. With one of those left hands. For the second time, it's the left that's shaken. Oh, Again, a wobble. Again, oh, White comes Joshua. through. Joshua sticks his tongue out at White. White in survival mode here. Or oh, White is starting to come apart here already. White's got a hold. White's got a hold. He's got a hold. He's there. White's showing he's got a chin and a heart. Joshua's got a big smile on his face. He walks him down. Can't miss him, can he? White just swinging it's at a over. different level from White, and there's no getting away from that. He's in a totally... It seems that he's got through some of the cobwebs. He got out of the round. Oh, oh man, that was Joshua hitting after the bell, and White not having any of it. White's lost control. He doesn't want to get disqualified. He, he's a boxer. He knows it's hit after the bell. There's no question about that. He reacted to that, and you can't blame him. But he should not have continued to react to it. He would, he would still be throwing punches at What Bank said just to... Calm Dylan White down, and as you said, Paul, he starts off with a jab, but Joshua... Yeah, but you know what, he, he's, I think Joshua's too too, uh, too reliant on the on the power shot. Yeah, I mean, Anthony Joshua. He's got to get off the ropes right now. We don't want to be there with Anthony Joshua. White trying to do just that. Joshua, big right uppercut, followed up with a straight left. The legs wobbled again. Solid yeah. crunching right hook. White can certainly take a punch. Oh, and and he's shook Joshua. Joshua. He shook Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. White going for it. White's got to be given on to punch himself out, though. He pressed his chin out, and White's done that. Big right hand from White. He was like a wounded. And Joshua, for the first time in his career, as a professional, shaken. That the win. Joshua has never and been in this again. situation before. He's never had to fight. You know, he's a gold medal. And he's been hurt tonight. There's another one of those body shots that White got him with earlier. They both gritted their teeth and dug it out. What a round this has been. Joshua not looking good on his legs at all, and White continuing to work. Dillian White, I gotta say. You know, see when you do a lot of power work in the gym, you know, you can become a little bit muscle bound, you're throwing punches. That's the first time he's been extended in that, and he's oh, yeah. a body shot, also took a lot of steam out of him. This is Great. a real struggle. Great catch for and Anthony shoot. Joshua. Great catch. This is one of uh, Joshua and return with fire. He caught her on the gloves and returned with fire. We call that a catch and shoot in the gym. We're looking at Dylan. Dylan White talking to from Jonathan three. Banks. Anthony Joshua. The job was done. And it wasn't done, and he got himself in trouble. Yeah, Concentration is... Clearly hurt Joshua. Good hand speed there from White. Yeah, and just about mixing your shots. It's it's like Joshua you know, lowers his hands and then put the right hand up to the head. 
Joshua lands a swinging left hook, but White has... Use the jab first, you know, it's, it's always White initiating. Yep, he's looked slow and kind of heavy-legged, Joshua. So he's thinking too much about the big shot. Look at his breathing, guys, he's blown up. Another question, we've never seen Joshua go this many rounds. As, as the fight progresses, will he keep his power, or will the power diminish on the jab? There you go. Look downstairs from Dylan White. Nice Joshua shot, looking Joshua. for the response, though. He gets it. Jab from Joshua as well, but White... Grits his teeth, soaks it up, he's yeah, really... Anthony Joshua is a bit too stiff. This one will be over after three, but it's not been a good night for Olympic gold medalists, has it? Really being put through the mill here by Dylan White. Uh, left hand to start with from Joshua. Well, you'd like to see him stay disciplined. But White has to stay disciplined all the time. And Josh is timing his punches much better than this round. His timing He's is pretty as well. That's a good one. Good one. Better again from Joshua. But again, White hasn't gone as far as proving Joshua's a fake yet. Not at all again. A slip from the legs as Joshua took. Oh, credit too with the chin he's got. He's got a terrific chin. The pro game. Here comes Joshua again. Absolutely. Yeah, he's showing smart defence, White, keeping the hands up. Don't forget, Paulie, in a few seconds, Dylan White's going into uncharted territory too. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah. they both, new territory for both of them. Yeah. Again, a punch on the bell has upset Dylan White. <laughs> you know, I think Joshua was so much better. But they're white showing. Big, big right hand. Joshua when he does connect. Joshua stole the combination. The notion that he can blast his way through Dylan White has gone. He's having to pick it around for Joshua. Yeah, he's timing his punches so much better than a couple of rounds thus far. Oh, good body shot. Yes, Joshua picking all the good shots at the moment. White not throwing back much of the game. the left hook, but Joshua was smart enough to catch it. That accuracy and that hand speed are back for Joshua now. He's coming in. shots have knocked some out of him as well. Oh, terrific. Needs but, a few more of those. But Joshua. Joshua White is still carrying at this stage. And again, Joshua finding it too easy to tag him at the moment. Keeps firing back every time he does get tagged. And look at this. Tag there with a beautiful right hand counter. Joshua. What a good fight this is. Way, way, let's be honest. Now, again, I keep saying what a terrific effort White has put up and taken these bumps. He's been caught cleanly so often by the same but knocking all these previous opponents out with, taking them. And coming back to dishes. Yep, everybody believed this would be over. Tell you, they're getting their money's worth tonight. Tell you, if you're sitting at home with a betting slip saying point, and we're only halfway through. Good way, because then obviously they're out, but he hunted oh, the shot. Finally got him. Is this the breakthrough? White looking to hold him, looking to size him up. Gets another right hand through. White looking to try and hold, lands a right hand of his own. Terrific response again from White. And as long as White returns fire once in a while... Which he is doing, Foster but look at the legs. Up. There's a grin from White, but the legs are betraying him, and down he goes. He's hurt. The way Surely, he went down. unbelievable at the finish. Joshua in his corner, which is good to see. Yeah, and such a grueling fight that the punch resistance is not quite the same I mean, what it was when you were a little bit stronger. But what a terrific effort to put on shot that and it was a right hand from the side as opposed to the one two yeah, caught in the temple as well and quite often that's yeah. the punch the toughest guys you've ever seen side and he kind of shocked white he didn't see it coming yeah but that's a, that the same punch in the jaw mate. and there's the finisher terrific uppercut a lot of pent up frustration in that uppercut going in the footsteps of tyson fury as well that's for the future joshua anthony Bad blood continues just to bubble away. 
There's so many people in that ring. Ed Robinson, I believe, is in there somewhere. Good who seeks his first title in his second opportunity. They are ready. Wilder and all. We've got some bad blood. I would advise Dominique Brazil to not bring his when kids. Wilder in the inches of the ring. I'm going to go from good to knock this fool out. He may not get up. It's going to be an all-out, just vicious war. When that bell ring, you will suffer. You will pay. <laughs> To become up, become victorious, and become the WC champ, and, and spoil everything. Oh, it's gonna be mind. beautiful. My opponent's not gonna be able to touch me in the ring. He don't belong there. He don't belong there at all. I'm gonna beat him so bad that he's not gonna want to ever lace up the gloves again. This ain't no game, baby. And as you expect in a heavyweight, fight. one punch is all it takes. The former Olympian and number four ranked challenger from Alhambra, California. Dominic, been Trouble. waiting for the heavyweight championship of the world. It's time for Wilder versus Center in Brooklyn, New York. It's showtime! Introducing to you first the challenger fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with green and gold trim, joining us from Alhambra, California. He weighed in at 255 and one quarter pounds. With a record of 20 wins, only one defeat. He has 18 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his second attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former Olympian and current WBC mandatory ranked heavyweight contender. Introducing the challenger, Dominic Trouble. Black trunks with bronze trim, fighting out of it, representing his home of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He weighed in at already 223 and one quarter pounds. A 2008 Olympic bronze medalist who is undefeated in his campaign as a professional with a tremendous record of 40 wins, no losses, one draw with 39 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the ninth consecutive defense of his title, here is America's only heavyweight world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting, reigning and defending, undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the bronze bomber, Deontay. Three in charge now to give instructions, Harvey. Okay, Bob, as a reminder, obey at all times, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. Good luck. No wilder. Verbal warfare about to manifest here. The Deontay Wilder 40 outs. Referee is Harvey Dark. This is knockouts. Dominic Brazil. The bell. Round one, Brazil hoping to produce it. Wilder, Wilder obliterated him in the rematch, and Wilder told us Brazil exactly the same way as he lands the one-two advantage of that. We thought Brazil having 18 knockouts total. Wilder goes. Ooh, going to the body with that left hand. And rarely. And that's something his trainer. Former double punch, Polly. Go to the body with the right, and then the right uppercut on the inside. He's shaking his head. He's getting hit with well, wild right and hand. That's oh, been that's the been already hurt. Wilder. Top of the head. All over Brazil. Mullenberger. Oh, but Brazil comes back with a counter right hand. And it's on top of the head, not even on the chin or anything. I mean, on the face. And Brazil was uh, throw with him. And oh, oh. oh. Used his power to end fights, and he was angry compared. Well, that is a statement if you're ever in round. Brazil, I mean, he's usually a sturdy, durable guy. Obviously, he felt he could get inside, muscle Wilder, make this a long fight. Short, but very potent fight. We all knew that Dominic Brazil had problems early in the 
fight. Wilder suggested that he was two right hands by Wilder that were the biggest punches. Well, that one actually came up a little short. I don't remember. He shook his head to indicate it wasn't hurting him, and maybe they didn't, but so was able to get the right hand on a regular basis. That was a, a very uh, seldom used. He goes the kind of fight he's going to fight and how successful he's going to be. And, and he's, how Brazil was trying to get inside and walk him down. But what's the difference? Well, the difference is there's Wilder when he was trying to work him with no jab. And that's the right hand that actually got Brazil. But again, Brazil's trying to come in, throw results he needed and that's and that, and while the jet got him that result not quite beating the count in any case and that this kind of celebration is what that knockout created of brazil down low while they're landing, he, he will use the jab effectively and throw the right hand. This is what Deontay Wilder right, does. Was, the quickest point from A to B is always that straight yeah. line and the right hand straight and down. you know, the... Brazil fought this whole fight at long range in this first round. And you, this was kind of... Yeah, and that's what Deontay Wilder did here. And oh, Wilder is. Yeah, that's on the chin. I mean, that landed right on the chin. And he was out before he hit the ground. Deontay Wilder with his ninth successful... Let's make it official with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Deontay Wilder! Short, but very potent fight. We all knew that Dominic Brazil had problems early in the fight. Wilder suggested that he was two right hands by Wilder that were the biggest punches. Well, that one actually came up a little short. I remember. He shook his head to indicate it wasn't hurting him, and maybe they didn't, but so was able to get the right hand on a regular basis. That was a, a very uh, seldom use. He goes the kind of fight he's going to fight and how successful he's going to be. And, and he's, how Brazil was trying to get inside and walk him down. But what's the difference? Well, the difference is there's Wilder when he was hurt him with no jab. And that's the right hand that actually got Brazil. But again, Brazil's trying to come in, throwing. Results he needed, and that's and that, and while the jet got him that result. His family at ringside exploding in jubilation. I want to thank Brooklyn. It's like a second home to me, baby. Think... Brazil down low. Wilder landing, he, he will use the jab effectively and throw the right hand. This is what Deontay Wilder right, was, does. The quickest point from A to B is always that straight yeah. line and the right hand straight down. was said, and, uh, and it just came out tonight. This is what makes boxing so great, you know. And, you know, Brazil fought this whole fight at long range in this first round, and you, this was kind of... Yeah, and that's what Deontay Wilder did here, and Wilder is. Yeah, that's on the chin. I mean, that landed right on the chin. And he was out before he hit the ground. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder, with his ninth successful title defense. The tape for our main event. Spence is 26 years old. Algeri is 32. They're almost identical in height and reach. Algeri. Across the ring, hits a Spence Jr. Okay, guys, touch him up. Errol Spence is undefeated yesterday. Chris Algieri feels he's been over in this arena. This is the first time that Spence has ever faced. Those uppercuts, and uh, Chris has short punches on the inside. Algieri. Good body shot. shot by nice shot. The trainer told us something very interesting. I said he's fought Manny Pacquiao, he's fought Amir Khan. Manny Pacquiao and Amir Khan aren't as fundamentally sound as my guy is. And, uh, he has been here as one in this arena. We saw him do it last Samuel Vargas. Just before this, he'll be talking live with Todd here. Final seconds, round one. Spence and Algeri under lesson tonight. As we go into round two, this one's scheduled for ten. Uh, you know, I was one of the people who thought... Errol Spence won. getting that first round from Eric got officially people been able to get in and push Spence and he said I want him to feel how strong I am to find Errol too much in this first round nice left nice. hand by Algeri real nice by Algeri he's coming in to land his own jab he got hit with a hard left hand there and that hurt him 
And a nice uppercut. Spence going to work against the ropes. Now Jerry's hurt here, Kenny. And he got hit with a hard left hand. You see that? And Spence continues to do work against the ropes and trying to hold on here. Round two, strong strong. Now Jerry's conditioning is a yeah. And hung on to at least get a break. That was an amazing fight, Kenny. Did you just see a clip? And Spence again. Nice right. And a good left. And the uppercut. Chris told an interesting point. He talked about it at the fighter meeting yesterday. We're not going to see it have a chance. Final seconds. Errol Spence with an impressive... Take a look at the Applebee's corner cam. Some of the action in that last round, you see the nice right hook by Errol Spence in a crushing left Jerry. hand in that last round, Kenny. And uh, I'm surprised at the composure that Chris was able to maintain. And in the Spence corner, saying way to go, keep it up. As we go into this round three scheduled for ten. And in the black and gold is the Olympian, Errol Spence. He's yet to lose. You see that nice wide for that left uppercut. And just getting maximum leverage on every single shot. Jerry's starting to assert himself a little more. He can't stay on the back foot and wait for Errol to attack. It's too uh, too complete of an attack. Just but Spence continues to be the aggressive fighter. And he's not missing because Spence is going to the body. There he was loading up like that, going to the head. Now Jerry would make him miss, but uh, Spence really banging Chris up. Underneath Errol's head to make sure that Errol can't land any good punches in there. Chris, Chris Algeri. Algeri trying to fight back out of this. But Algeri starting to have some moments here in the third round. Definitely uh, not getting the best of it, but he's landed. A in the seventh, eighth, ninth rounds to see the conditioning of Spence. Well, that's what I'm breaking him down and getting him out of there. Hall of Famer Manny Pacquiao wasn't able to do it. And uh, if Errol Spence can, it would really make a statement tonight. Beautiful body shot. Spence does some work to that body and work along the ropes. Final seconds of round three. The Olympian coming in here with an undefeated record of nine his career. And so far, he has looked very strong. He has. He came out dominant, Kenny. Digging the body, attacking, and hasn't given Chris. And all three rounds, Eric Graskin unofficially scoring it for Spence and going down. Seven. Eight. Okay. Oh. All right. Errol Spence has knocked down Algeri here in the fourth. Remember, though, the Pacquiao fight. Six times he went down. Six times he got up in Algeri. Yesterday, how he fears the body punches of Spence. He had it's, great. It's much easier to defend against headshots. Errol is a disciplined body puncher, and he's so heavy-handed so, down there. It makes it tough. I'm not saying Errol Spence is better than Manny Pacquiao by any means. And now Jerry just spins him around along the road. Those kids, that the longer the fight goes, the rest. he gets better with time because of the body punching. Look at the eyes of Spence. He's on his back. Low blow. Spence goes Good up. left. Jerry against the ropes. Spence digging into the hook blow, and then uh, Spence just assaulted him again off those ropes. Control this fight. And now thrown down. Now Jerry just throws Spence down. Rocking Chris Algieri. Oh, and, and then before the fight. Let's take a look at the knockdown in the last round. You see Chris bending down and shooting that left hook. Getting a nice exchange there, but Earl hitting him. Earl very heavy handed kid. And we go fifth round schedule for 10. Spence trying to stay undefeated. He has fought outside of the state of New York only one time. That last round, and he goes down again. Spence does it again. Five, six, seven, eight. Jerry, when he went down, he's not going to be able to take too much more of this. And Spence trying to finish it here. He has a wounded prey, and he knows it. Remains undefeated. Chris Algeri goes towards the Manny Pacquiao, fights Amir Khan tooth and nail, and takes him out here in round four. And I mean, that was just an impressive, impressive display. Uh, Kenny, I cannot say it. He just showed he's ready for anyone in the division. Against the great body shots, takes this round.
And you see Chris kind of falling in there, and Errol taking advantage of an off angle coming forward, and then Chris just with his hand down, off balance. Errol always in position to punch down. Chris is in bad trouble here, and Errol just mixing up his attack. Overhand left, and Chris just didn't know where to defend himself. Errol had a very complete offensive attack, and uh, very impressive. For the 26-year-old Errol Spence. He's, uh, I gotta make a pretty strong case for him. Kel Brook better get the training camp. Had great body shots, takes this round. And you see Chris kind of falling in there, and Errol taking advantage of an off angle coming forward, and then Chris just with his hand down, off balance. Errol always in position to punch down. Chris is in bad trouble here, and Errol just mixing up his attack. Overhand left, and Chris just didn't know where to defend himself. Errol had a very complete offensive attack, and uh, very impressive. He is victorious here at Barclays Center right now. Let's go to Ray Flores, the arena announcer. Great body shots, takes this round. And you see Chris kind of falling in there, and Errol taking advantage of an off angle coming forward, and then Chris just with his hand down, off balance. Errol always in position to punch down. Chris is in bad trouble here, and Errol just mixing up his attack. Overhand left, and Chris just didn't know where to defend himself. Errol had a very complete offensive attack, and uh, very impressive. He is victorious here at Barclays Center right now. Let's go to Ray Flores, the arena the mandatory uh, in his last fight with that against Barrera. And he's, this is more of a stay busy fight. And just continuing to impress. For Javante Davis, he's had some adventures on the scale. He lost the title that way once by being overweight. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trunks with silver trim, fighting out of him, representing his home. Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in at 134 and one quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 14 wins, no losses, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making his first attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the colorful and dangerous WBA number one ranked lightweight contender introducing the undefeated Rolando. the ring, the defending champion, fighting out of the blue corner. The young star of boxing from Baltimore, Maryland. He weighed in at a battle ready 133 and three quarter pounds with a sensational record of 26 wins in the hard hitting, undefeated, reigning and defending WBA lightweight champion of the world, introducing Gervonta. For Javante Davis, he's had some adventures on the scale. He lost the title that way once by being overweight. It's showtime! In the dressing room, I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. So here is a look at Rulli Romero. This we'll see. a different idea. Javante Davis. And here we go, round one. 18,970 people on hand. Well, we were talking about that. I mean, this is just a much better fighter. If at all possible, we'll see if he can. And the crowd here is up on its feet, but not on this first round, keeping David at bay. Yeah, and Romero doesn't always use it. Double right hand from Davis. Davis is... Not to Romero's defense, but he did say with the That's first, true. not landed any. Well, he did mention round one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Just Only showed the left hand and just pawed with it. Only 22 punches thrown in round one. The war right at the get-go. A good shot by Davis and a good counter by Davis. Rolando Romero didn't think I was going to get to round one, but I do. So let's take a look for Juan. Nuanced and great technical fighter, and they feel that he added something in his corner. Yeah. And, and you talked out about the scene is that he's taking two steps back, making it difficult. Left yeah, good point. Interesting to see Javante Davis 
using the whole ring in boxing. Holding on, I don't know if that'll be a knockdown, though. Remember? He got a right hand that time, and that rocked Davis for a moment. Well, Romero thinks he can hurt him because he's going after him. Now Romero stalking him now, and Davis going backwards for the moment. Punches Davis at this point. He's just retreated. Yeah. And this is not the posture. Another left hand from Davis, but it was partially caught by Romero. Action round. Well, there was a moment in that round there would be a, a left hand. It was actually more of a jab than a hook. Davis himself would get the left hand in. Very nice left hand. And of course, that is. They get really loud. So, you know, that might play with Davis. That head. was good preparation for left-hander Davis. Talked about the jab that Romero's using. Really effective. The combination, but nothing serious. Right hand was caught by the glove of Davis. This fight early on is looking to be the simple equation. The left trying to hug with that jab. Very short with the hook. That was caught on the gloves. Yes, he did. Right now, maybe the difference in this fight. Well, I remember last time out he fought. Davis, neither one of them. He faded and Romero flinched. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. He's there. Here's where the. Um, the left hand is going to come from Romero. More, he's got kind of a half jab. Yeah. Later on, the right hand will come from Romero, and he lunges, and that allows Davis to counter with the left. All day, all day, all day. Punchers, and they're showing that in this fight, only 61 punches. Both of them are not trying to make mistakes. That's how Davis stepped in with the left hand, but as he went on through sparring, it got better and better, and he said it's not an issue in this fight. Right hand. That left just barely missed. Yeah, when David throws that jet, oh, beautiful oh, body, he just missed it. Very much as advertised. Head in the game, tank, and Romero. Oh, that left left counter punch, he might want to jab his way. Was a left hand from Davis. There was a good left hand. He's doing that. He, you get, you can see the focus in Tank. Right Throw now. that right so he can counter. So oh. he's, he's upset that. He, oh, he is hurt. Oh, watch your hands. Watch right your hands. Yeah. Good body shot. Well, and there's the, the, the oh, good body shot. It, it's not, it's not a lot of punches to the body after that, but we'll be watching that. Now he's talking now to he's him. Talking to him. Play the, the mind game here, Davis. A little short with that left hand. And in the last round, fields to see how much he will accept. And he's already given two warnings, so the next time. Different posture for Gervonta Davis, fighting from the outside, certain things like this. We just don't see it all the time. He has to do against a bigger Romero. Yep, probably. Well, we've talked about his maturity as a fighter. No, you're right, because in previous fights we've seen that he, yes. he seems kind of awkward. But in this fight, he's not looking There's a big left hand. Someone walking into a punch, and Romero walked into that straight left. Yes. We've seen so one of them showed itself in this fight, as it's so hard to yeah. point. Yes. He was look, looking good. He was throwing his punches, oh. setting up punches. We see Roland leaving that. Wow, that's it. Wow. He still looks a little woozy. Yeah. Davis. The big punch, well timed. And what he'll do here is just counter left hand as Romero came in squared up. 
hand again. Right hand, very low for Romero. Mm, all right, right in the chin, cross eyed. I mean, it's the first time in this fight he really led like that with a wide right hand to the body, and man, did he get blasted with that left hand. Devontae Davis demonstrated in that shot. The WBA lightweight champion of the world, Javante Tank Davis. As we see the tail of the tape, 15 years age difference, that's a big number. Left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver trunks, hailing from St. Louis, Missouri. He weighed in at 189 and one half pounds with a background in wrestling. Here is the two-time All-American tonight looking for revenge in his second professional boxing appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting MMA star and the former UFC welterweight champion of the world, introducing the chosen one, Tyron Woodley. Entering the ring wearing white trunks trimmed with the stars and stripes. Fighting out of Dorado, Puerto Rico by way of Cleveland, Ohio. He weighed in at 191 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his young campaign to the squared circle with a record of four wins, no losses, and three wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the acclaimed content creator, the popular media sensation, and the undefeated boxer known as the Problem Child, introducing Jake Paul! Okay, Jimmy, you've seen yourself in the a long time. So it's not looking at this long time. Of course, the count of 10, y'all two are the judges. Let's touch them up. Luke, when are you ready? Buck. So here we go, round one, we're going eight. Walk in, and of course, the mistake he made in the first fight. Don't square up, never stand in front of Woodley. We know Jake Paul can bang. Can he weather it, and can he have an offense of his own? This man. Come on. A lot Watch of clinches in the inside. Blue stop holding. Woodley did Blue say no, he shouldn't give him nothing to tie him up with. Watch your head. Now we see Woodley on, clinching, on, Barry. Stop, 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 stop. Watch the back of the head. The man really doing much beyond. Oh, no. Break clean, break clean. I give it to Jake Paul just as I thought he. Yeah. Let's tell me about that. Yeah, he said he's got to open up their legs. Oh, over the top right hand. I think your leg, when your legs are too wide, like they're going to be off balance, man. So Paul trying to wing shots Come here. Come on, Down low. Put his elbows in and go to work. Work the body. Come on. A lot of outside in punches on, from. Nice combination from Paul, left to the head, right to the body. And finally, Paul Woodley. Come he's falling in for the same trap as he did in the first fight. I mean, he... boy, there's real danger of a clash of heads here too. They're both just. The horn, right? you know, they did tell me that Jake has been trying to work more on the inside, which he is. Look, he's doing good, some inside work. Good shot with the left hand. And mid to even short range, right there he holds, but huh. definitely a, that was definitely a round for Jake Paul. Well, he's gonna have to do some business. I mean, he's just you will see Jake with the jab to the body overhand I, I right. Told you already. Kind of like a little Woodley coming back here with kind of like a body. Then that, that left hook kind of landed. Set it up. He set it up with that right hook to the body, but then. Jake Paul seems pretty relaxed. He does. Much more so. Willie just doesn't seem comfortable in there. He took a right hand from Paul. And the right hand of the body. Right hand from Willie. 
Maybe the side of back straight fall up. Woodley now opening up on Paul. I was going to say, those yeah. cuts bleed a lot. Yes. No, 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 and no, Woodley no, should no, take no, advantage no, no. of that. Guys, maybe blinding him a little bit. A uppercut from Jake Paul. Back Too slow on his feet. Like, like he's stuck on sand. You know, he's got to be faster, explosive with his feet. It's a concern for sure, Barry. Could this be a, a Woodley round? Go. Possibly, oh, right? Elbow. Okay, actually, no elbow, okay. Uh, it was a headbutt. You know, I didn't see no elbow there, Barry. No, I didn't either. That's right. Take a look. Well, he was already cut up right there. Yeah, that was a nice one-two there. That was a solid one-two by him. Jab down, hook right hand. He's reaching bad with his right hand for your jab, all right? He's reaching really bad. You hear me? I'll tell you, if they, they, they don't stop the play, that could be a factor in this fight. Definitely. Wild wow, swing, Jake Paul. And the blood starts again from the no, forehead. No. Absolutely. Good inside. We're nice up there by Woodley, but that's one shot. That's it. He needs to get small. Little punches, punches and punches. Nice combination yeah. from Jake Paul and close. Some good court. body shots. Come on, y'all. Boy, there is real danger of a headbutt here. Jake is forgetting about the no, jab. No, 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 uh -oh. no, 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 no. Even stuff okay, like that is mentally right messing up. Right? This, fight. Jake. this was roughly when he started to get tired on, in the last fight. Yes. <laughs> One jab. The advantage yeah. of the opportunities that are being presented to him here. This is what Woodley's explosive is the combination to play. Come on, y'all. Again, Mr. one. Duke. Jack Paul just missed that overhand right. To make for Woodley winning this round. Yeah, right. It's a tough round right, to judge. I'm second half of the fight. Round Come five. On, Keep punching the front. Well, he started out with a couple of jabs, oh. and that's it. Watch the back of the head. He's got caught with an uppercut coming in. Oh, headbutt. And there was the headbutt. Head oh. head Jake Paul, because he's taller. That cut has not really opened up again. Great job of stopping the bleeding. No, 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 no. I, 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 little combination there from Woodley. He's still there for the taking. Ten seconds, Jimmy, ten seconds. Nobody wants it. You'll see both jabbing at the same time and oh look at that headbutt again Barry like I said the top of good exchange there in the inside that was that was a pretty good uppercut but that was pretty much it this is pretty tough to watch to be honest with you come on up a couple of punches from Jake Paul I would say there has no, not been a good okay, clean shot from Stop. either Oh, right hand from Woodley. Blue. Come on, watch the back of the head. All those missed. Oh, there's a good oh. right hand, and that drops Woodley, and it from Jake Paul. Lead hand right. and put Woodley to wow, Barry. That, get excited. I mean, <laughs> that's the way you draw up a one punch. Okay. And he set it up good. No, no. And we're going to see how Woodley dropped his hand. Boom. Just as good as it can be. Oh. He dropped his jab hand. Boom. Boom. He might have came straight up over the, down the pipe, and he turned it over, over the top. <laughs> That's the look of a guy who just. You will see it again. Look at that. Boy, I hate to see a guy go down like that. That came with everything. Got power. Jake Paul. So Jake Paul, five and zero, oh, four knockouts. Uh, none more impressive than this one. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, madame et welcome and welcome to the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF, WBO, WBA, IBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. Presented by K2 Promotions and Klitschko Management Group. Sanctioned by the BDB, President 
Tomas Putz, Executive Director, Jean Marcel Nards. At ringside, the three judges scoring will be De España, Senor Manuel Marit Halar. From the United States, Mr. Clark San Martino. From Belgium, Monsieur Philippe Verbeck. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, De Puerto Rico, Senor Luis Pabon. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are ready for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Sanko Dobrokev. Wearing black, officially weighing 98 kilograms. His professional ring fighting record, 40 fights. 36 victories, including 22 knockouts with four defeats. From Paris, France, the challenger, former cruiserweight, champion of the world, the fighting bride of all France, Jean-Marc, the marksman, Mami! And fighting out of the red corner, with his trainer, Hall of Famer Emmanuel Stewart, wearing red with gold. Weighing in officially at 111 kilograms. This Olympic gold medal champion now has a professional fighting record consisting of 59 fights, 56 victories with 49 knockouts and three defeats. From Hamburg, Germany, and Kiev, Ukraine, the three-time world champion, the reigning, defending, IBF, IBO, WBA, WBO, heavyweight champion of the world, the Weltmeister im Schwergewicht, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Klitschko. Hey, Klitschko needs 
to get those long levers working. Jab stunned into the face there of Morbeck. Morbeck at 39. He's been in plenty of rings before. And he knows how to protect himself. Crowd don't like it, of course, but Morbeck has to fight his fight. Carlos Pavón is uh, being called upon here. What a scrappy opening to the fight. Shopping left hand there from Klitschko. Warbeck has to be anything but a standing target. That's what he's trying to do, continually move. Klitschko is his fight from behind that left jab. There it is into the face of Mormack. Follows it up with the right cross there, Klitschko. Klitschko bounding forward. Ominously there. Now he's into his rhythm here, Klitschko. Space because he's going to be all over the place now. He's tired already. You can look at this. He's totally tired. tired. He's going out already. Came out to all hype, but you shut him down. Now keep him at the distance where you want to fight him at. You don't have to get so already. Just create a little space and keep him out there and just keep doing what you're doing. It's a matter of time. And, uh, we've heard those words before from Emmanuel Stewart. It's a matter of time. words from his corner, it's only a matter of time. I must say, it does rather feel like that. Unless Mormek can really pull off something sensational. Then he comes forward with his head down. The referee's been a busy man in the opening round and a bit. to fire anything he has to get in close he has to be able to reach Tichka and that's not easily done particularly not easily done when Tichka is jamming that left jab into your face it does wear you down good shot there from Tichka already Mormek seems to be struggling with his power Uh, French television colleagues the ringside. We almost look plaintively over at them. Then. Often seen him working these Tetsuko fights for French television, but there he is in the ring. Big chance on Warbeck caught with the right, and he's gone down. Down in the second, the right hand for Tetsuko. Takes the can of eight, turns his back, ready to resume. 
in trouble already in the second more Matt Klitschko will sense the finish is nearly there and even there he was looking at his colleagues from French TV when he was down on the canvas his head doesn't seem to be in the right place at all here Mormon straight right from Klitschko that hurts more than the left hand with the power to quote Emmanuel Stewart I think it is only a matter of time here chopping right from Klitschko Oh, Mormex 
trying to fight back. And there's the bell to end the round, and again, Warmick. Looks to his uh, French TV colleagues. Almost as if he's trying to impress them. Create a little space, just a little bit. You're good, you're sloppy. He's coming in, you're doing this. He's coming. Just create a little space and keep him out there where he can't find you and land your clean punches and keep him moving a little bit. But see, you're, it's, it's very sloppy now. You just, he's coming in and just getting to be like Sam Peters was. And all you had to do is a little space and let you try an uppercut or two. It's there. You need to try it. He's right here all the time. You uppercut either chin to the body. Just, he's not punching back. It's not like he's a guy that's going to counter punch. When he punches okay, at you, he has to... You, you don't need that. You don't need don't that. Don't push him down because I just got one point. Okay. okay. You don't have to. Just keep him away. His legs is gone. You just, you're just you holding him up. Create a little space. Yeah, that's the message. Create the space. Find the shot to finish it. Comparing it to Samuel Peter. Because you've got Peter out in the tent. This might be earlier. Klitschko can celebrate. 
and he will go to each corner of the ring and therefore each corner of the auditorium he's immensely popular in Germany and he's hurt there he can only beat what's in front of him and he does that with incredible regularity Up he goes again, right in front of us, in the commentary positions here. Supported from behind by his brother, Vitali. The smiling Vladimir Klitschko. Could be next, of course. Might be David Hay against Vitali Klitschko. There are rumours that the deal has been agreed. That's what Hay's saying, anyway. And that maybe is the only realistic fight out there at the moment. Vitali wanted to finish what his brother started in Hamburg last summer. The official announcements from uh, Michael Buffer and interviews with both fighters as well. I'm not sure there's going to be a great deal to say. There's the uh, ring heavyweight belt, ring magazine. And there's a disconsolate looking Mormek corner. But the Klitschko's, of course, <laughs> celebrating as they've every right to. And as they often do. Pretty much always do. So a sold out arena. And another dominant, never in doubt performance. <laughs> nice little post fight moments between the two brothers. his own uh, wrappings before we have the uh, official announcement off they will come quite comfortably he seemed to be a bit uncomfortable didn't he with them wanted to get them off whether he's hurt his hand I don't know fighter cutting off his own wrappings like that. There's uh, the manager, Bert Bernter, the man with the grey hair. Doubtless plotting the next fight for both men. And at least Mormek, well, to his credit, was in good shape, nearing the age of 40. He came and gave it a shot, but he never looked like he had um, a chance. I just want to say to that. And there he salutes that corner of the arena as well. a popular fella and such a good player of a crowd as well still the champion Vladimir Klitschko 35 year old at the top of his profession explosive night's work which is what the crowd wanted and a win as well which is Really good night for Vladimir Klitschko. 
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Buffer, Madame and ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames and Messieurs, the prediction and the promise was made and it has been kept. Knockout number 50 is in the record books as referee Luis Pabon reaches the count of 10. At one minute, 12 seconds of round number four, the winner by KO victory and still IBF. IBO, WBA, WBO, heavyweight champion of the world, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Hitchko! And that's what the arena thinks of that. They are all on their feet. going through his mind wondering if he's going through it is could he have done anything differently that's the way that it finished never could stand up to the power so we can hear now from uh, ja, Vladimir, versprochen ist versprochen, der 50. K.O. Wie stolz sind Sie darauf, dass Sie das halten konnten? Ich möchte zuerst das Publikum begrüßen. Ihr seid da. Und das ist für mich das größte Tag. Der größte Tag. Vielen Dank, dass ihr dabei wart. Hier in die ersten Reihen und ganz oben da in die letzten Reihen. Vielen Dank, dass ihr dabei wart beim meinem 50. Knockout. Ich bin schon seit 15 Jahren unterwegs im Sport. Und ich habe versucht, alles zu tun, dass ich dann 50. Knockout... Feiere. Und jetzt ist der Tag. Am 10. Dezember hat es leider nie geklappt. Ich weiß, der Weg zu diesem Kampf war sehr lang, nicht nur für mich, sondern auch für euch. Aber dafür nochmal vielen, vielen Dank. Vladimir, der verdiente Applaus. Ein sehr eindeutiger Sieg, ganz klar, von Anfang an mit ganz klaren Treffern. Da bietet sich die Frage an, was war denn heute anstrengender? Der Kampf oder das Aufwärmtraining mit Emmanuel Stewart? Die Strategie von dem so Gegner gewesen, mich müde zu machen und der möchte unbedingt you, the, durch die ersten Runden mich anmarschieren und natürlich müde machen. Aber äh, es, er hat versucht, dann ab dritter Runde oder ab zweiter Runde zu, zu feuern und ähm, es war ein kleiner Jab, den ich habe gekriegt habe in die linke Auge. Das brennt gerade noch. Said, uh, Aber sonst, ich habe den Kampf dominiert und ich habe mich gut auf diesen Kampf angestellt. But, uh, Inwiefern hat er versucht, end, einfach nur zu überleben? Was glauben Sie? Bitte? Inwiefern hat er versucht, einfach nur über die Runden zu kommen? Oder hatten Sie das Gefühl, wenn Sie ihn angeguckt haben, der will auch gewinnen? Der will gewinnen, der möchte der erste Weltmeister in Geschichte Frankreich zu sein. Wir haben viele französische Stars auch, sind am Ring dabei. Ich möchte auch schon nicht alle nennen, sonst haben wir vergessen. Das. Aber auf jeden Fall, er hat eine tolle Unterstützung von zu Hause und er hat natürlich alles, alles versucht und alles gegeben. Es ist unglaublich schwer, die ganzen Gürtel immer allein zu tragen. Deswegen hatten Sie heute Unterstützung von einem kleinen Jungen. Können Sie uns kurz erklären, wer der kleine Junge denn war? Den haben wir ja alle gesehen. Alex, come over. Said, uh, ich wollte nur gerade vorstellen, sonst viele wundern sich, was macht der Kind auf meine Schultern. Der kleine Junge heißt Alex, der kommt aus San Francisco. Der ist uh, ein riesen Klitschko-Fan schon seit Jahren und hat versucht, mich persönlich zu treffen. Leider konnte es nicht klappen. Um, Alex ist leider tödlich krank. Es sei nur gewesen, Ill. einfach den Stammel zu treffen. Und äh, ich habe ihn gefragt, möchtest du asked, vielleicht in Düsseldorf bei meinem hoffentlich 5. Knockout dabei sein und eine von meinen vielen Gürtel tragen? Hat er zugestimmt, zugesagt, knockout. heute ist er dabei. And, uh, und I ich wünsche, yes. dass Alex so weiterkämpft und wirklich sehr viele Jahre seines Lebens noch hat. Und and, and this, this, this cheering, this cheering is for you, Axel. Alex, that's for you. Alexis, your applause. How proud are you wearing the belt of one of your idols? The best thing in my life. How do you like this atmosphere here in this football arena in Germany? It's amazing. Okay, thank you so much. And I cross all my fingers for you, Alex. Thank you so much. Danke schön auch, Vladimir. Wo haben wir denn den Vitali? Den möchte man natürlich auch gerne mal hören. Normalerweise zittert der Bruder immer ein bisschen mit beim Kampf, aber ich glaube, heute hielt sich das Zittern in Grenzen, oder Vitali? Ich bin sehr glücklich und möchte ich noch einmal viele äh, Dankeschön sagen für alle, die zu Marina gekommen sind, Vladimir zu unterstützen. Dankeschön. Und, äh, 
he said. Uh, Und, uh, sehr verständlich. Yeah, no, it was very impressive. Uh, Vladimir war so gut drauf, habe ich ein paar Wochen zusammen mit Vladimir im Trainingscamp verbracht. Er war in super Verfassung und deswegen habe ich erwartet im vorzeitigen Sieg. And, uh, Viele Gegner sind im Schwergewicht nicht mehr übrig. Einer heißt David Hay, da können wir gleich weitermachen. Das said, Versprechen, uh, wer das, das Versprechen, Hay? dass wir Sie das nächste Mal mit David Hay im Hay Ring zusammen sehen? Ich hoffe, der nächste Kampf wird und der nächste Gegner wird David Hay heißen. And he said, Danke I think my Vitali. next fight is going to be against David Hay. I think that's what's coming next. So there's some interesting news, potentially. Uh, what, now? He, he said that with some certainty, didn't he, Vitali? And there they are with the belts, the two brothers. They pretty much own this division. We are now going to hear from uh, Jean-Marc Mormek as well. Before we leave you, Vladimir Klitschko retaining his title with a fourth round knockout of the Frenchman. <laughs> Real that emotional story with the young boy Alex from San Francisco, isn't it? And it really uh, shows you again. They never ask for credit, these two, but they do so much amazing work with Klitschko's. It was a lovely moment when he said this cheering's for you, wasn't it? The little boy's face lit up. So now we're going to hear Jean-Marc Mormek. Again with Karl. Ja, nicht wundern, ich spreche ihn auf Deutsch an. Er hat das Ganze übersetzt, denn er spricht kein Englisch und äh, muss sich das erst anhören. So, Jean-Marc, erstmal, es war ein schwerer K.O. Wie geht's Ihnen gerade? And he's getting it translated, as you can see. Je vais très bien, ça va. He ça said, va. I'm going fine, thank you very Dennoch, much. Uh, Sie haben okay. viele Treffer abbekommen. Haben Sie den Gegner so stark erwartet? So do you think it was going to be as hard as that? Mormex? Non, c'est vrai que j'ai été battu, mais yeah, sincèrement, true, I was beaten. je pense que j'ai... Uh, C'était quand même assez prématuré, là. L'arrêt était quand même assez prématuré, But pour I think moi. The, the, the stoppage was Wir haben gesehen, short, Sie sind immer nach uh, vorne in ihn reingegangen, aber haben, glaube ich, sehr, sehr wenig geschlagen. Was war eigentlich die Strategie? So what was your strategy? You didn't seem to throw any punches. Mais, le truc c'est que je devais me désaxer, mais c'est vrai qu'à chaque fois je rentrais, c'est quand même, il est quand même, c'est vrai, il est difficile à, à boxer parce qu'il est très grand. Il me sature à chaque fois. Donc je pensais que l'arbitre allait peut-être, peut-être plus intervenir que ça, parce qu'à la rigueur c'est un combat de boxe, il peut avoir un corps à corps. À chaque fois je suis saturé, donc je pensais que l'arbitre allait réagir. J'ai pris un premier coup où j'ai été touché. Le deuxième coup, je suis touché, mais je suis pas sonné. Je pense que l'arbitre me lève pour, pour parce que c'est parce que la fin du round. Et puis il m'arrête. Là, vraiment, vraiment, je suis pas. Je suis un peu frustré. Il frappe, mais pour dire que j'étais KO, là, je pense que c'est un peu prématuré, vraiment. Sie waren im Cruisergewicht Weltmeister. War vielleicht doch der Gewichtsunterschied dann am Ende zu groß, oder die falsche Gewichtsklasse? Non, je pense qu'il bien sûr, il y a une différence de poids parce qu'il est beaucoup plus lourd, il frappe, c'est vrai, il frappe plus fort. Mais à la rigueur, ça aurait été un KO net, vous aurez pu même vous pour vous, vous aurez pu dire c'est 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 je veux dire c'est flagrant. J'étais relevé, j'étais debout, là je peux vous parler, je suis debout. Non, franchement là c'était pas le ce coup là, il c'était pas bon, vraiment. Vielen Dank, merci beaucoup, Jean-Marc Mormek, und ich gebe weiter zu Nasan Eckes, der dein Gesprächspartner. And you're going to see that 10 year age advantage for Diaz, though Marquez is not exactly waiting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, officially weighing 134, one half pounds. This two-time world champion has a professional record consisting of IBO lightweight champion of the world, El Torito, Juan Baby Bull Diaz. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver with red, Official weight, 134, one quarter pounds. A three-time world champion and future Hall of Famer has a professional record. De Ciudad de Mexico, the reigning, defending, ring magazine, lightweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel 
Dinamita Marquez. Good luck. Let's go. Who is the best lightweight in the world? We're about to find out. the hard work that Ronnie Shields did in bringing Rocky Juarez home as his trainer. Nacho Beristain was the man who handled Oscar De La Hoya in his disastrous outing against Manny Pacquiao. Already the pressure from Diaz. At this stage. Diaz showing respect, but ripping Marquez with another left hook. Three body shots from Marquez. This is going to be a hellacious war. Between a younger and older fighter. In this case, the early rounds seem to favor Diaz. To hit Marquez for the most part. I thought, I, I thought this is what we would see starting about the fourth round, but not in the Not to mention the well-known cultural Mexican tradition of willing to mix it up. What a big left hook by Diaz. Marquez trying to fire back, lands a right cross and a left hook. Round one is through old. the middle with punches where he's really exerting his weight. And, his, and even though they weighed in, the Marquez to back up by pushing his punches straight forward and pushing his weight at the same time. And by the way, with the sole exception of his one round, I get the hunch that Marquez is going to need to stay yes, up. And I don't think he's going to do that. And the way that Diaz is punching, he's got his head down more where he's getting better leverage in the exchanges. And Marquez is straight where he can maximize his strength. Big left hook, staggers Marquez. Marquez in trouble and trying to fight his way out of it. Marquez might have been gone right there. It was an unbelievable shot. That instinct that I mentioned from Morales and Marquez has the same thing inside him. In fact, if you want punches in the round, big left hook by Diaz, straight right hand by Marquez. Jabbing and hunting. Marquez going to the body and coming back up. Missed the right hand. I want you to relax, Bobby, now, okay? Now listen, don't let this guy out jab you. Here we say Diaz driving in, as we call him, left hook right there, and head probably because he had him back and back. And he's maximizing his weight on every punch by lunging forward as he punches. <laughs> and particularly, every once in a while, they go off the diving board all at once. But he's looked really good in the first couple rounds against the guy who's looking. Punch combination by Diaz. And Marquez is landing punches, but the, the way that is just as good sometimes. Good right hand by Marquez. Real fighters. Punches forward with four fours, and also you see punches coming back from Marquez, which are counting. That's what we tend to score for the floor. Very, very rare. Back to this fight. Walk Diaz's head and stand there and slug with Diaz, and that's how Diaz works. Walk Diaz led them. Walk Diaz said, just like this one, right there. Three to nothing, Diaz. You know, a harder puncher, but of course, Diaz, as we pointed out, is by nature the bigger man. Maximum level. He punches his body forward in a Joe Frazier type style. A four punch, counter punch combination. Awesome stuff. Vaseline, where's the Vaseline? Here you say Diaz land his beautiful left hook. Evidently, Marquez cannot feel the left hook in particular at the end of the round. Diaz established <laughs> themselves with their volume. <laughs> Diaz again, imposing his will against Marquez on the ropes and catches him again with a left combination. Hook. And he nails Diaz with two uppercuts in a row. Both brothers. Straight right hand down the pipe by Diaz. Well, I tell you what, this is going to be a tough fight by the Another huge left hook by Diaz. You know, referee 
Raphael Ramos has not had to break these guys up in one clinch at all that I can remember. I didn't even know he was in the ring. No, nope, they're just fighting their way straight through. On our competing, a competitor network, Showtime. One difference. Good left hook by Diaz again. In other fights. Another big left hook. There, Diaz got in the. Marquez is beginning to become. Uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. How many times you see that? Left hook, left hook. Back into the ropes. All out war. What happened to the boxing? Diaz eats a hard right hand. Land. Give me a deep, give me a deep one. Deep one. Let him out flow. Again. Okay. Don't let him build. One Diaz. Sim, one man will mark his belly to stay off them ropes. When he goes on the ropes, Juan Diaz just pummels him like you're watching right here. Man. When a fight goes into the center of the ring, one will know what one man did in the Rocky Juarez Chris John fight that preceded this. And he'll be trying. Straight right hands landing for one man. Left hook, left hook, body shot, left hook to the body, all by Juan Diaz. Now it looks as though the stamina advantage is beginning to show for the baby boy. a bit with his mouth open since the third round. Uh, the pace is something, as you noted, Jim. Two straight right hands by Marquez. Two more big left hooks by Diaz. Drives Marquez right hand of his own. Marquez trying to counter again, keeping the pressure on. He listened to Ronnie between rounds. He's not gonna let the Mexican rest. Listen, don't go to the ropes. That's on his favors. In the middle, in the middle, you're beating him. The exchanges that they have him, you see the punches are landing, short punches, sweat flying, shows the type of a fight this. You've heard the crowd, you've seen the energy. In January, it was a tremendous crazy night. Big crowds in Madison Square Garden and Youngstown, Ohio. For Miguel Cotto, this. Economic conditions are helping to bring boxing back to its roots, and fans are responding. Super cut from Marquez, which has been maybe his most defined. Along with the straight right hand. So they're equal in cuts now. Middle of the eighth round. There comes he, the uppercut again. He's trying to, in a row. He's trying to hold with that left uppercut. Diaz isn't landing many, but he's asserting his energy again. Good job of blocking punches there by the baby bull. He'll have to go to work on Diaz That's between rounds. Same thing as, you know, Marquez is fighting for the pride of his country. You know, even though they're both supposed to be Mexican, right now, as he considers Diaz a half Mexican, he's American Mexican. What action. This is amazing. Marquez is a good defensive fighter, but Diaz overwhelms the volume of his punches. Even as Marquez. And as the blood flows, the urgency level rises. And you change just... somewhat. And Marquez's confidence level is starting to grow now. Diaz did not respond well to the cut against kind of dire way here against Marquez. Well, we told you how Marquez adjusts. Yeah, Mar 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 Diaz got caught with a left hook and he looks stunned. 25 seconds out yeah. away. Diaz, Diaz with a left hook to back him off. And you know Marquez is an experienced fighter. I don't know if Diaz can handle that because he has not had that type of experience. Hey, what was it? Joe got the cut. Now listen, give me that Marquez. Here you see Marquez mixing up his punches, punches to the outside and between the gloves. I think, and here is the left hook that he catches with the head, which he just simply didn't see the punch. And it's a, it's a punch that hurts his always when you came through. Harold Letterman's scorecard begins to tighten. Marquez making his patent to... He's the heavier-handed fighter, puncher. And it's starting to take its toll on Diaz. ...box record for these two fighters tonight. 
while they smash each other's faces. Exactly. Marquez made Emmanuel in about the yeah. third or fourth round to find that upper camera way at it with two and three uppercuts at a time. Very smart, smart fight. He's made great adjustments. The last time, this time, he would be watching, but as he's turning around, he's back in the fight, and Diaz. You know, it's interesting when Diaz had it, and Marquez said he never would dream at that time, especially being that he was only 16 and ended up fighting with Diaz. He said he was shot. They're taunting each other in the window. Yeah. <laughs> Great left hook by Diaz through the sheer force of will. All credit to the referee. Because they when don't know the it, It'll be the first thing he's done in the fight. In fact, it's Diaz who's had more experience fighting at this point. And he's 10 years younger. And he's fighting in his hometown. And he's supposedly the stronger man. And he's hurt. Yeah. A huge uppercut. Down goes Diaz. Can he make it out of the ring? 35 seconds to go. I okay. think, but I don't think that's what he's going to do. And look at Marquez go to the body. Look at him go to the body and try to set up the finish. And what a right hand. And that will be that. What you just saw was a really good young fighter knocked out by a... And you're pound for pound number one. Maybe. Marquez. Just my No, be. that's what you said. And you have good grounds to say that. Well, let me say this. Who is great? Marquez is just as great. Right hand, but what amazed me was the precision and the accuracy of the punches from Marquez. He didn't miss too many punches. And Produced that first knockdown. The second knockdown is really almost a formality on a brilliant he right. Punches. He threw punches over the top and then threw punches up underneath. The Which sheer is, lightweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamita. Center in Brooklyn, New York. The Big Apple is set for one of the biggest. The former interim title holder and in the current WBC number three heavyweight in the world tonight, looking to become the first Cuban born heavyweight world champion. Introducing the undefeated no, Luis no. King Kong. Olympic bronze medalist who has knocked out every opponent he has faced in the professional ranks with a record of 39 wins, no losses, 38 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the seventh defense of his title. Please welcome the hard-hitting and undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world known as the bronze bomber. Introducing Deontay for the heavyweight championship. I'm going over the rules in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands and tough at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Two undefeated knockout yeah. outs, and so is Luis Ortiz, who feels wow. for Wilder. He says it's all about the number three. He turns 33 this yeah. month, and he predicts the third round will be the harm for the champ puts the wild and Wilder, but he talks about his punches as being like a whip. And Ortiz and shot so the one to the elbow. Just trying to probe what, what Ortiz is going to do. And despite the, the trash talk. Wilder wary here in round one. Oh, good counter left hand. Again, by he's taking away the ability of the to counter. With his Ortiz lands a shot. <laughs> round one went. But wanting to keep that lead foot to the outside, as you mentioned, Paulie. Experience. He's, he, he, oh, there's a left hand. And Ortiz just slipped off balance. There's an exchange in the center. Respect. 
to his Cuban challenger trying to utilize. That's not the case. No. Oh, and there's a shot. left hand to the chest by Ortiz in Cuba, where the top amateurs. Good start for the challenger in Brooklyn tonight. There's a good hand by Ortiz. Excuse me, Wilder. I believe the straight left hand. And does, in fact, land it a little bit and then the slip. Body. For Ortiz, he, he, he lands, that came, kind of came off the elbow of uh, Wilder. Trying to land that right hand and kind of cuffed him with the right hand. There was a big punch has landed. Guys are still kind of feeling each other yeah. out there, you know? Most exciting part so was the sport. timeout, but he's in tough against Luis Ortiz. What do you look at things he did in sparring? It's a fascinating approach. Both of these minute gone here in the third round. And seems to be a, a lack of action. Spilka was a little bit of a different kind a different of lefty. style fight. But Ortiz. Kind of a staple for Deontay when he's on. He's, his jab is really snappy. Combination. 30 seconds with the lay of the land here as Ortiz comes forward, misses with the left hand. Each other here in Brooklyn. Official attendance tonight, 14,060 artists. And there, Wilder putting together in this round, he had only landed three There's jabs around. The right hand by Wilder. Wilder wants to counter him with the right hand, but Ortiz is not following. It's the midpoint of the fourth round. There it is. Again, there's that left hand. And, 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 and try to get all the There's a the good combination by the South Pole. Right yeah, now. Got to put that right hand in the chamber. Right now, Ortiz. Otherwise, Ortiz will keep winning the real estate battle. He's doing the controlling of the real estate. Catapult left hand blocked by Wilder. He puts the champion, Joseph Parker. Something he hasn't done. He uses the jab. He doubles with the jab. It didn't land perfectly, but it set up that straight right hand by using the jab to help him kind of get on the inside and then land his straight left hand. So uh, it was almost a mutual. This fight is that you feel like any right, anybody can land something. Oh, and remember, Ortiz on his toes. Now. Yeah, that yeah. was interesting. And Ortiz attacking the body now. Continues to back up. Pressure being put on by Luis Ortiz. Right hand by Wilder. So little offense coming from Wilder. It's not that Ortiz is throwing a million punches, but Ortiz fainting more, and I think that's part of the issue. There's another exchange counter. there by right hand by Wilder, but Ortiz doesn't move. Wilder, 15 seconds oh, left on the fence, oh. and there's the right hand! Ortiz is down for him in his career! All it takes is one knee. This is where Wilder was able to land a right hand. It was interesting, and the second one. strong Wilder is. And Boom. Oh, on the forehead. Yeah, and, and, and the deep comes running in and delivers. <laughs> I tell you, that didn't even have any effect. I tell you, no, no, it's round, which would negate some of the ones that right hand earlier. Let's see how it That right hand is the equalizer, uh, and they exchange Ortiz now launching some shots. He's off balance. Part of why he's going to leave himself open for the power. Play. While they're pumping the right hand now, catch him to the madness. It's controlled chaos. Left hand behind you can the touch him, you know you can shoot a right hand. Nick Scott, who lost to Ortiz by this uh, decision. The ambulance affair. Yep, says there's no oh, point. Oh, my. Wilder, wild, and yet able to survive the exchange. And Ortiz survived oh. the knockdown in the fifth, coming back to the final stages of the sixth. And see how reactive Ortiz is. And just like that, the booze turned to cheers. <laughs> Lots of good, so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Wilder landing again a free Ortiz better moments. Wilder kind of off balance. Jabs. Tonight, 18% are landed or jabs. Dynamic partially because he's facing a lefty. Polly did Ortiz make here down the stretch. Well, Ortiz has, to Ortiz has not gotten leverage on his left hand Let's like he navigate a minefield of power as he's a little fainting. Flashes the jab. Well, and there's a right hand. Partially blocked by Ortiz. There's another right hand. Boy, that caught Ortiz but the right hook. And the right hook by Ortiz has Wilder. He needs to hold on. He's on inline skates momentarily. Let's 
see if Ortiz gets to him now. Oh, oh straight left hand. Wilder gets clipped. Wilder's hurt. Wilder's hurt. Wilder's hurt. Wilder's hurt. Unloading on Deontay Wilder in the seventh. And Or- Wilder's Ortiz emptying the pukes a lot here. And the Wilder in trouble. Will he stop the round? He does. Wow. Ortiz, he had gotten hit with the big right hand that would turn the tide in this fight. That's the punch. He doesn't lose positioning oh. when Deontay comes forward. With some very shot. big shots. That's the kind of left hand that Ortiz thinks should knock you out. Ortiz, best round of the fight. You see how reactive Ortiz is. And Wilder positioning with the right. See the positioning of Ortiz, very key. The Jab from Ortiz, a minute and a half gone. And as fatigue starts to set in, Another body shot, Butchin picking up here by Ortiz, back sort Wilder to the ropes. Right hand, he's hoping that'll change things around, and it could. And he's, throwing, he's giving up too much position, too much ground. If it was more time, he probably would have wound up down. Remember, going into the... Is either man right now tired? Ortiz comes in, the left hand sweat. Landing on us here at ringside. And there's a thing. There's a right hand that back. Ortiz up and again. Wilder exploding. This has been around. Wilder's probably won though. Oh. And an exchange after the bell. Oh. He wanted to. Did have some very good moments. There he got hit with the, the straight right hand. And he, was, and, and he comes in. A Wilder, but was hit with the left hand that stopped his momentum. The straight right hand. Punches by Ortiz have landed 43%. And that's oh, a kind of of her. Landed at the same time, and the exchange as Ortiz tries to hold on. Says it was not a knockdown. And that's a hurt right out. <laughs> Probably we're going to see a double knockdown there, but now Wilder again. He's staying yeah, right. He is staggered. Right cross. Clubbing left. Joshua show us the character in the Klitschko fight. And there is great show of sportsmanship between. Exactly. Yes, Goosebumps watching them hug like that because they're brothers of more than just memory facing the winner of Joshua or Parker. In this round, and he was hurt with the right hand, and now not only the right hands, but the left hooks as well. And we have take to a look at it. Ortiz, as you point out, was still calm looking to counter, but couldn't. And also another thing, this started a few seconds ago. Still early. the first knockdown in that round. The straight right hand in trouble and that left hook. Exactly. He's been in issue. some trouble earlier, and this is why Wilder got so brave. The wild him. attack by Wilder, but still he's landing. And th- at this point, Ortiz not able to counter. When, came, when Wilder came off the ropes of that right hand. And that's why Wilder, once he's confident, he knows he has you hurt, he'll let the he'll let off all, the entire arsenal. Deontay Wilder. It is. 188 Let's no, all remember no. here, this is the Ryzen Tournament, the final, the main event tonight. One of these two will be competing in 48 hours. Two five-minute rounds. If we need a third, it'll be an extra five-minute round. Kicks and knees to the head of a down opponent are illegal. What are illegal are elbow. Once again, my name is Joe Farrell, joined alongside the baddest man on the planet, Joe Warren, about to see his boy, King Mo, take on the legend, Mirko Krokop. He's got his wrestling shoes on for grip. He's moving better. I'm excited to watch this fight. I was always, I was just asking you about reach advantage. One was wondering if Mo has a longer reach advantage than Krokov. Yeah, good job. King Mo wasting no time trying to close the distance using his strikes. 
Krokop obviously that stance getting lower. You see that kick coming. And that's exactly what King Mo wanted. He wanted something low and he's able to get that takedown down to the ground. Less, just over 30 seconds for him to score that takedown. It's exactly what Mo wanted. He wanted him to throw that low leg kick so he could have caught it into that single switch to a double. That's where we're at. Head position perfect right under the chin. He's in the center, his, his head's not getting pushed to one side for a submission. He has, has to get his hands off the mat and worry about, well, there's no elbows this round. And just look at the size difference, Joe. Mo is uh, definitely smaller. Mo is now stretching him out, putting his forearm on the neck or on the chin, lifting up and cocking his right hand back so he can land some bombs. Love to see. Nice. Nice round and pound. Good position. Needs to make sure that he's posturing well. Saw Kroko up there trying to sneak his left leg through, looking for a triangle choke here, but a great job so far by King Mo. Getting the takedown, working his ground and pound. But Mirko Kroko up now is trying to trap that right arm of King Mo. And I'll tell you right now, this is exactly where King Mo wants to be. He wants to stay right here for the first round, uh, first five minutes, do the same thing second round, take no damage, move to the next round and defend his belt. Good. Referee imploring King Mo a bit more action, although I do believe he is working. And the referee here wants to see a bit more. When they say action, they also want to see damage. If they are rising, they would like to see damage. And I like to correct myself, he's not defending that belt. Tournaments are separate, it's a separate belt for each tournament. Here we have here King Mo. Like Joe Warren said, keeping his head in the center position, not making his head wander to the wrong side. And of course the referee says, nope. Not causing enough damage, we're gonna stand up here. We got two minutes and 15 seconds in this first round. Mo's moving forward, bringing him in that corner. Prokop looking to land that left there. Gotta defend the takedown first. Look for knees and uppercuts to be coming here. And Mo needs to circle him back, push him against that, push him against the corner again so that he cannot use those nasty leg kicks. Oh, a trip attempt there. By Krokop. Oh, there's a left to the body there. Your boy King Mo better protect every part of the left side of his body, or the right side of his body. Oh, there's Krokop. And we, talk, we talked about Mo keeping his hands low. They're higher than they normally are right now. I don't think those shoes are helping him much. He seems to be sliding more. Nice. I want it. This is what we, I just talked about the first round. He's waiting for that low leg kick, switch from a single to a double leg, bring him back to the ground, and win, win with position. Yeah, it seems to be a little slippery, like you said, Joe. This is not where you want to be. You want to get a little more distance. I was just going to say the same thing. If you stand too close to Krokop, that's what he's looking for. And he wants to make sure that he's outside that front leg, that he's moving left. Less than one minute to go, and there we have here Kimo looking for the double. Now he's clinched up here. Continuing to pummel, continuing to work for that takedown. Knees landed by Krokop. There are 35 seconds left in this round. Mo has controlled the whole round. He's won this round, I think. 30 seconds to go. Look, there you see Mirko Krokop loading up there. He was yeah. looking to throw. There it is. That is a thunderous shot to the body. Oh, and it's King Mo with the comeback. But Krokop's mouth is open, means, meaning he's tired. You don't fight with your mouth open. These two guys are not messing around here. Krokop again throwing those shins. He's reckless abandonment, and, we're, and there you the have King Mo wanting to get that fight down to the ground. Do you think Miracle Pro Cup did enough?
to sway the judges in that round there? No, I don't think so. We talked about this with the wrestlers earlier tonight. They get focused on finishing that takedown, and they're focused at one thing. They're going to keep running. They need to stop that. They need to understand if the takedown's not working, you need to switch it up. That's the takedown I was talking about. A low kick. He caught the single leg switch to a double and won here. Now he's on his feet. Another hard head kick, at least his hands were up. Mo's not usually a guy that keeps his hands up. Nine out of ten times, that could have been, that could have been really bad for Mo. Well, you can see when Krokop bites down on that mouthpiece, and he stops for that one moment, he loads up, and he launches an absolute baseball bat. Your way, you need to be making sure you are blocking that thing or getting out of dodge. That one there, he did rock King Mo, but King Mo said, you know what? I don't care. We're here to fight. Now we're going to fight. You're now going, heading into the second round. And Mirko, he is a tired man right now. Uh, the reason I said that is when you're opening your mouth to throw punches and not and not biting down, it's because you're trying to breathe. And that's because your conditioning's not there. Mo round needs two. to be smart. He needs to be smart. He needs to uh, control distance or push him against this ring and make this fight against the ring so he can't get kicked. Good job. See, he's moving left now. He's moving outside that front leg so he can't get kicked. He's got to kick across his body to get to him. Yeah. up in my opinion, was smart. He just showed, hey, here's the left hand. He faked it, and we saw what happened with King Mo. King Mo immediately got out of dodge. Yep. But he needs to continue to move left and stay outside of that front leg. That's exactly what he's doing. He's basically taking your advice. Do not, under any circumstances, have your left leg on the inside of Mirko yeah. Krokop's right leg because that is what Krokop is waiting for. That's what a baseball bat will be coming your way. Yeah, that's, you know, the bottom line is you don't move into a man's power, especially a veteran like this. He's one good takedown, Mo. Let's set it up. See, you hear his corner, Mo. One good takedown, and this fight is over, folks. Without this one takedown, and they stand up here this whole time, there might be a third round. Now we see King Mo competing with his mouth open here. Yep. Oh, a nice, nice right hand landed there by King Mo. Back he broke up. up. Up with the left cross, throwing out the jab right now. A little bit more aggressive in this round here. Finish. Oh, and now it's Krokop as Kiko in the corner, throwing those combinations, throwing those punches. Oh, no. Takes out Kiko. This fight is over. Miracle Just like that. Just like that. You know, you, you get a big, powerful man. He puts so much force behind his punches. One punch can change a fight. We talked about this before with these super heavyweights. That's what we just watched. He was losing that whole fight. Lands one hard shot, and he hits his face. Mirko Krokop advances. We'll be competing in 48 hours. We'll be taking on Baruto, a guy that he called out at the post-fight press conference. In September, when Baruto did not show up to the post-fight press conference, Krokop got on the microphone and said, Hey, with all due respect, Mr. Saki Kibara, where is this guy? All of us are here. Where is he? For those that don't know, Baruto was injured. Baruto did not take too kindly to those statements. And we all saw what happened afterwards. And now these two will settle their score in the next round taking place New Year's Eve here in Saitama, Japan, in this very arena, in this ring, this as Sai Games Super. presents Rising Fighting World Grand Prix 2016. This Saitama Super Arena is going crazy. They love Mirko Kokov. Thank you for this great support. Thank you. See you in two days for my next fight against Baruto. Thank you. Well, clearly, ladies and gentlemen, you know who the fans want to fight Buruto. They want Krokop to put a hurting on this guy. Yeah, they do. I'm not sure how that works, though. You know, Here's, let's take a look here at the finish. You saw King Mo going in for that takedown, and then as soon as Krokop was able to land those, those combinations. It was nights, lights out, night over. The 
fans are absolutely cheering. And we're about to see all of the tournament competitors remaining in the Cy Games Presents Ryzen Fighting World Grand Prix 2016 enter the ring. There is going to be some tension here, believe you me. Right now, King Mo is actually congratulating Mirko Krokop as we see Krokop's corner. Of course, that takedown wasn't there. The power, the power of 50 pounds right there, that is what will do for you. Oh. There you see there the finish of Krokop on King Mo. Came out as a surprise to Joe Warren. Surprise to yours truly, as we thought that's exactly what was required. Here's from the referee's point of view. We thought for sure it was going to be King Mo needed that takedown. And as soon as Krokop was able to spin him around, it was game over. We talked about this all night. Uh, things can change with one punch. Those big heavyweights have so much power coming behind those punches. If one lands, it could be all over. Bringing the men together for their final instructions. Let's do this. Touch up. So Celestine's reminding both boxers of their responsible res responsibilities for the seek and destroy operative from Assetia. Both of them in the battle for the undisputed Cruiserweight World Championship is underway. Round one. way of characterizing this fight would be to say it's the best comparative inexperience show up in favor of the Southpaw tonight. Rounder tonight. Remember, this is just his professional ranks. Murat Gassiev competing in his... Yeah, but, I mean, as we said, no, Usyk, he's, he's the world warrior. Seventh fight outside of Ukraine for Alexander Usyk. Six different countries. In Ukraine, Germany, US, anywhere. Gassiev even said he would fight on the moon. Good start, poor right jab. Just for his jab. Not a lot's happened, but I think... If you're going to score it, it's going to go towards Usyk because he's had, a, he's had a dominant jab. Abel Sanchez is in Gassiev's corner change more of that in a moment as we analyze some of the action from the first round. You go Gassi, we have a early Holy double cut from Usyk. Yes. Double jab, Usyk using the house, using his feet well. Usyk again, mover left and right, in and out, and his punch volume is in. 13 and a half time. Nice, nice combination there from Gassi. Gassi targeting the artillery of Gassi. But despite being the more eye the draw, there is a fourth judge, and there's a count back system in place, and somebody will stairs and downstairs from Usyk. And look at that movement. But again, it's practically incessant, just continuing to poke it out. And serves of Gassiev, who's trying to parry it with his lead left hand. Counter left hand over the top from Usyk. With a nice like Gassiev's ferocious 2 3 4 punch combination. There's that two, three, four punch combination from Gassiev trying to very intelligent work to the body, another lefty block by Usyk. That's intelligent work from Gassiev, he knows Usyk to be very... Immediately out to the space of centre ring, but once again effective shot from Gassiev. But look at the movement from Usyk, it is something that you have to mark. Watch that later on in the fight. And cries of Iran, Iran. Exactly, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, no, every jab he throws, he's, he's not, he disrupts in his rhythm. A nice little uh, counter war hook there. He's, he's, got a, he's got to land them bigger shots later on in the fight. Compete, of course, in LA 1984. Beautiful movement from Usyk once again. But there were other terrific boxers which we've been staged in this venue. And you see Gassiev not far back. Really is unloading when he gets the chance, planting his feet into the canvas and letting big shots. Nice counter left hook from Gassiev. Into the body beneath Usyk's right elbow. Now getting up on his toes. 
terrific round of boxing that you prefer. So Rust and Butt just wrapping the towel around. So that's why the change has been made in Usyk's corner. Nice jab there from Usyk and there's that counter left hook. Both round the Ben jab. I think this fight's gonna be a pick from round one to round 12 if it goes that far. The highest quality to this constant point. movement, laterally. Familiar pattern once more. So that's it against Vladarchik. Gassiev is your, no, he's your typical elite. Speaking with his trainer, Abel Sanchez, during the week here in Moscow, said that he possesses the mindset, the mind map. If anything, that can be done to deter him. Beautiful left hand and then a right uppercut. Two. In flashy, effective fashion from Alexander Usyk. And, then a... and again, making Gassiev miss rather badly. He's always moving. And when he gets moving to... in the later rounds, I don't think he's going to mind losing the first few rounds. the fight wears on. Oh, the right hand. Noise in this arena, Ronald, when he landed that right hand. Here we go. Whack. Dangerous shot. There we are. Slip, bang. Poor, great shot. You should take a well to be fair. Yeah. Now that was in the closing seconds, that success from Gassiev, but prior to that, bothered by that too much in the long term. And again, Marat Gassiev more than twice the number of punches thrown to this point in the contest. Circling his opponent, seemingly in punching range as he gets through with a good counter. And that as the contest progresses, with left hand through the guard once again, but a hard right work with that snake lick of a right jab, Marat Gassiev. That was a little bit of flair here in round six as it was in the opening round. But body shot sucks Gassiev to Abel Sanchez after his 17th professional contest. He was 17-0 with 11 knockouts as, a, as boxer and trainer. Hard left hand from Gassiev. And then he digs one downstairs yeah. at the summit up in Big Bear. Assistant works when they do it in training. Good left uppercut from Usyk. And he says relief. Yeah, and there's nothing like uh, adding another world title for yourself. But um, he trains very hard. And he's boxing really well. I mean, it's a scream every time Gassiev throws a punch. It'll be interesting to see how the judges are scoring. Back system, where the last completed round of boxing will be taken from the three scoring judges. More of that as we go on. Hard left hand to the body once more. Now, um, second, any more of that, I think we'll be getting points taken off, which we don't want to see in this fight. We don't want to see well, Gassiev out quickly to begin the seventh round. Notice, notice you sick always, always veers off to his right says we're going to be at our absolute best we've left no stone unturned and invoke the spirit of the legendary Hula, Helio Cesar should be looking to employ a similar type of strategy throughout his career an impressive from yeah. Usyk once again non-stop punching through the midpoint yes, of this probably now best part 15 and a half stone now and the hand speed is, is, is tremendous they an identical 198.2 pounds and again that combination from Usyk but Gassiev continues to pour for the perpetual motion of Alexander Usyk and there's a big right hand which concentrated on his work and countered with punches of his own. Usyk, Usyk out boxing like prior to that big right hand the one now in the seventh round. Well the pack artillery being unloaded by this man. There's that. He, already, he fell short. He, he fell short. But he's got a carved up shoes out of himself. Good round from Music That The most dominant round so far. in his corner team. Beautiful left hand on the end of that volley of punches once again. Kolosov. He's described as a mental coach. Fast, short, chopping punches, using great, unbelievable. And a punch of the caliber of Gassiev is always with him. Oh, the KO doctors. He got through the good right hook. Got with where he was competing as a 75 kilogram. Yeah. There's a good left hand to the body and right hook around the corner. Of world amateur boxing with that world championship win in yeah. ringside for that as well. As I was for London. Demonstrating the importance of a deep amateur pedigree. The competitions in between the world, the Europeans, the yeah. and him and Lomachenko sitting at ringside. They above were above their opponents. Um, 
And it's been a pleasure. Like he, he pretty much demolished everyone in the amateur ranks. And he's done the same to everyone in the pros as well. Success as he targets the body effectively once more. Rusik intimating that is to keep the punches up through that momentary discomfort. Look at the furious response in terms of this man is impossible to discourage. And he's fight as though he enjoys John Lennon from Gassiev once again. Rusik continuing to demonstrate that he really is a complete fighter. He can box, he can he's, punch. Um, he's boxed beautifully for the whole fight. For the way he dictates the pace of the fight with that. Myris Briadis and all three of these fights that went the championship distance. He has prevailed in three of those contests. The 23, 23rd fight against Isaiah Thomas, who was 15 no at the time. The two men just exchanging conversation. Who is in control once again? Well, we posed him early on with the superior experience and deep amateur 12 and a third completed round. Okay, so that is Alexander Usyk with terrific accuracy of Usyk. He's been and uh, <laughs> nobody's been as fluid as as Usyk. He's, he, he turns defence into attack. He's got beautiful punch selection. He doesn't look for power that much. He's just three, four. Incredible to watch from Alexander Usyk. Continuing to create jabs and a left cross and a left up ring craft. The punch output, I mean, he's got the swing out of him. He's, he's just boxed really well. He's boxed so well and he's, he's made gas ever look. Off. Alexander Usyk flowing as free, freely as Mercury. Second clap and not audible. And Alexander Usyk gets on his bike. The bow sounds to conclude the 12th and found. Nice to see that sporting embrace. But then a masterful display to box his way with everything that he had. Think of that can describe that performance. He boxed so The WBO title in his 10th contest. Murat Gassiev missing. Yeah, that's it. By using supreme footwork. See, such, a, such a top performance. Oh. has just made fistic history here in Moscow by becoming the first undisputed cruiserweight. <laughs> Alexander Usyk rubs in ecstasy. Welcome back to Sheffield, the city where a record-breaking Olympic boxing team were based ahead of London 2012. Star of the show. 33-5 veteran, Paul Butlin, who shared the ring with some very good class opposition. It's a current European champion. From Milton Mowbray, Paul Butlin! And now, ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, turning the goal, weighing in at 16 stone, he is undefeated. One contest to one win inside the scheduled distance. Come to the ring as the two-time ABA champion and ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Olympic gold medal. He is the future people's champion. Please welcome from Alpha, Anthony Joshua. Well, Putlin was the original opponent for the debut three weeks ago, but he turned that down because he was getting married. Challenger, Paolo Bidos, former European champion. Jonathan Banks, who went seventh round. Gerber, who just boxed for the European title. Just recently lost in five to Gary Cornish, the big Highlander. In He's Inverness. making up the numbers tonight. It's, uh, you have to expect this, but I mean, it's quite right. You have to be careful with all, all talents. Yeah, rocked him there, rocked him early. And the legs are sagging, and he's really feeling that right hand here, Butlin. Don't oh, take too many more of them, and Joshua knows he's got his number. Howard Foster's already... The speed of that right hand from Joshua, that was terrific. You can see him warming to the pro game. He's been sparring with Joshua, and he said the thing that really impressed him more than anything about Joshua is the way he adapts. Whatever you throw at him, he deals with it. And comes back again, every time Butlin feels one of those right hands, the legs shake, and there's another one. And the switch to the body sagged at the knee. The 37 year old is probably thinking, What am I doing in here at the moment? Yeah, I think Butlin had, uh, had his mind changed. He was hurt, he's been hurt a couple of times. 
He's still in there, thankfully. He's the full back then. He said, ah, oh, Joshua, he's a bit slow, flat-footed, stiff. And he also admitted it's a totally different lifestyle. But run, then he has to get the kids to school, then he goes to work. Nothing else he has to worry about any of that just at the moment. Well, Butland trying to be a little bit cagey you now, getting his hands up, blocking the shots. Maybe a good time to go back down the to the final bell. In the end of the round. Done well, as we said, a weak group because he looked like he was going to go in the first minute and any rush here. Yeah, which is also good. You know, he doesn't have the pressure of the crowd looking for the knockout like Hutley. Not for the first time in this round. There is that bell you're waiting for, Jim. He survived the first three. You right, man? Yeah. 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 Big Nah, uh, Josh, a very businesslike there. I mean, he's huge, he's athletic, he's talented, everything going for him. Not in any hurry whatsoever. He wants to do the job cleanly. Not a lot of see, just picking his punches nicely. Round two of this six rounder. That was a shrug almost. Oh, wait, this is going to be a painful night's work. Switching with a body shot there. Josh Willey, Oh, nailed him. He doesn't know where he is, Butlin, and I think Alan Fox is waving that up. There. Now, is he going to let him carry on? He is. Now, I think body language says, yeah. I want him out of there, I would have got him out of there. Well, I think, think Alan Fox is getting ready to step in here because nobody wants to see Butlin get hurt. Body shots coming in, he's all over the place here, and that's it. The towel comes in. Howard Foster says, that's enough. And a smart up and in with something special there. Well, it was a two-punch exploded on the eyebrow of Paul Butlin. Second, and that was a terrific punch. And the way, you know, uh, the, and the injuries he got back up, uh, you know, I thought it was over at that point. I mean, look at the, look at the way he's crumbled up in the blood foster. I mean, OK, you're dealing with a fighter's pride, he wants to put up a show, but uh, the, the night had kept him out of there. Thankfully, it wasn't a force to take too many more. But uh, that was another terrific performance. He's not going to go it's... overboard, as you say. He's not going to go out and win a world title tomorrow. We're not looking at another Lomachenko here or anything like that, but everything that you're asking him to do, everything you're, you're seeing. Yeah, and credit to Butlin, he didn't grab hold. Didn't so, you know, he came and put up a little bit of a show, he did that, so a bit of entertainment, and he played his part. But his part was over. The future people's champion, Anthony Joshua! How about your appreciation, please, for the prize fighter, Paul Butlin? Six for six of pure brawn. Anthony Joshua, two out of two. Second round demolition job on Paul Butlin. He celebrates the win. We'll hear from him very, very shortly. Well, Anthony, congratulations. Another spectacular win, another stoppage victory. You've got to be pleased with the way that went. Not yet, because when you're in there, there's a few things that you could do better. Um, I'm still improving, still cracking on, but it's always good to get a win because now I can get ready for November 14th, which is my next fight, and I could, I've got about two and a half weeks to work on a few things to improve on. You weren't wild, though. You set everything up with the jab. Yeah, that's the key right now is uh, relax, do your boxing move, box again, move, look for the opening attack, you know. 6 for 6 a pure brawn. Anthony Joshua, two out of two. Second round demolition job on Paul Butlin. He celebrates the win. We'll hear from him very, very shortly. Well, Anthony, congratulations. Another spectacular win, another stoppage victory. You've got to be pleased with the way that went. Not yet, because when you're in there, there's a few things that you could do better. Um, I'm still improving, still cracking on, but it's always good to get a win because now I can get ready for November 14th, which is my next fight, and I could, I've got about two and a half weeks to work on a few things to improve on. You weren't wild, though. You set everything up with the jab. Yeah, that's the key right now is uh, relax, do your boxing move, box again move, look for the opening attack, you know, and uh, second round, what Tony told me in the corner is let your shots go, be sharp, you've worked your way into the second round now, now be composed and sharp, and that's what I've done. A lovely two punch, punch combination to Floor Butlin, were you surprised he got up from that? Yeah, man, the guy's a tough guy, you know, all respect to him, that's what I said, I like someone who comes to fight, someone who's game, and that's what he did. Just to see it here, Anthony. Not yet, because when you're in there, there's a few things that you could do better. Um, I'm still improving, still cracking on, but it's always good to get a win because now I can get ready for November 14th, which is my next fight, and I could, I've got about two and a half weeks to work on a few things to improve on.
you weren't wild though you set everything up with the jab yeah that's the key right now is uh relax do your boxing move box again move look for the open and attack you know and uh second round what tony told me in the corner is let your shots go be sharp you've worked your way into the second round now now be composed and sharp and that's what i've done a lovely two punch, punch combination to floor butlin were you surprised he got up from that yeah, man the guy's a tough guy you know all respect to him that's what i said I like someone who comes to fight someone who's game, and that's what he did. Chance to see it here, Anthony. I didn't see it. Here we go. Oh. Talk us through that. <laughs> Left hook, right hand. <laughs> Just it's boxing. One, two, body shots, head shots. You know, it's boxing ain't complicated. <laughs> Shrek is a great grappler, uh, known for his suplexes, throws, and a great ground game. These two have a long and storied understanding of one another. Ex experts say that Martinez will have a stand-up advantage. Let's see what reality says. The bell about to ring, and here we go. Look at that, right straight through. Martinez comes all the way across the ring. Now we pick up the energy here, leading with the right. Shrek. Seems a bit early on to, to be, I don't want to say lumbering in the movement, but very deliberate. That, that It's clear, Shrek making no secret, the intent is the right hand early. Perhaps that was the setup. Sprawling away from the double leg is Martinez into the ropes. These two don't want to stay here. Too much girth and already probably enough sweat. Busy right hand of Roque Martinez. And Shrek leans. Martinez trying to turn. He would be able to if the rope wasn't acting like, like a, a part of his That does show, though, that Martinez is driving his butt. Good underhooks there. Martinez seems to be confident. Energy is a big thing, especially in the fight game, understanding the flow of the room. Your energy moves throughout. Left hand, Fox, King, moving the other way. Front kick, trip kick down, went for the sweep off the kick, and right back up to his feet is Rooker. He used to find himself in a familiar position. Martinez, working from underneath as best as he can. Turning. Well done there by Shrek. Now let's see what Shrek can do here. Pushing deep with his shoulder, trying to get underneath the armpit. Pushing with the head up against on the chin. Hands are compromised, so the knees go into effect. Inside knee. Action! Soften up Martinez's base quickly. Halfway through the first round. Shrek left his head exposed here. Could see a good there. Oh, 
providing some strength, providing some time. Go on, Chum! Sopo kick off, Sopo straight. Three minutes into the round. Again, return back to the neutral position. Confirmation of the judge's face. This is frustration. Deep dive for the leg. And Martinez's hands are busy now. Shrek wildly back fist on the return. Shrek is dangerous. Covering and waiting. Almost baiting Martinez in and Martinez won't have it. And Shrek returns. And caught Martinez on the left side. Shrek kicks. The crowd comes alive. Shrek down off the balance. Hammer fist now. Ankle kick full out. Soccer kick landed big. Boy, Shrek's in trouble. Ref has to get in there. Shrek is now defending himself, and there's the ref. But it's not to stop the fight. It's to bring Shrek back in. But Shrek is rearranging his nose. That's it. It was the soccer kick in my mind that stopped Shrek, who, who never seemed to get out of the gate. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold shape, find almost anything All it takes is some time and some clarity To find your identity, it's mind over everything to him he's fighting the battle with grandpa keep fighting you're gonna do it you're gonna beat it let's go let's go let's do it thank you arigato thank you guys arigato a great show of sportsmanship. Once again, we take a look back. Deku's balance. Well, that was a straight right hand, actually, that started it all. I didn't see it from just the, the soft back of Martinez from the camera angle, but now our great camera staff has been amazing all night long, really picking up the points of impact and helping us better understand the knockout victory for Roque Martinez. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our double main event. The two fights that have had everyone talking, they've had me excited. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see Victor Henry and the 135 pound division take on Masahori Kanahora. This is going to. Ladies and gentlemen, the main event Clarkson, Dimitri Bivo. He went over the instructions earlier. 
Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to you.
you show me something. There we go. Show me something. Right. Let's go. Gentlemen, the end comes at Dimitri Bivo. Pabon, also der dritte Mann im Ring mit den letzten Instruktionen. 47 Jahre und er leitet hier, muss man ja sagen, sein 129 der Welt und der hier will das ändern, Alexander Sashovetkin. Angesetzt. Wie geht's hier los? Abwartend oder doch gleich mit ein bisschen mehr Power? Etwas zu erreichen, weiter zu schlagen. Hitchko will dann halten. Und da braucht Apovetkin eine gute Taktik, gute Schläge und vielleicht eben die ja, Versuch zum Körper. Das ist eine gute Idee von Povetkin. Zum Körper treffen, dann zum Kopf hinterher nachziehen. Ja, auch der Versuch mit der Überfall. Ja. In der ersten Runde gut. Gut, die Führhand. Ja, da ist er. Der gute Jab von Klitschko. Schön wieder die Führhand. Wieder überfallartig, die rechte, dann die linke hinterher. Gute Aktion vom Herausforderer Sascha Da muss er sich bewegen, da muss er weggehen. Und die Antwort folgt sofort. In den letzten Sekunden wieder die linke. Oh, uh, stärker Treffer von Klitschko. Aber nur zu Boden geschubst, da wird er nicht angezählt. Sehr viel wird investieren müssen. Die wir da gesehen haben, ist das dann runterdrücken von Klitschko, also halten oder ist das Abducken von Tovetkin? Da wird Luis Pabon eben auch entscheiden, ob es dafür eine Ermahnung gibt oder vielleicht im Spiel. Ja, wild. Wie man ihn selten sieht. Ja, dreht sich weg und hat dann Pardon. Macht sich immer ganz tief vor Wettgehen und dann taucht er auf. Das ist auch so eine... Ups. Guter linker Haken an die Schläfen und da muss vor Wettgehen zu Boden in dieser zweiten Runde. Wenn man hier einmal einen Augenblick... Der linke, der linke Haken. Das 
Stacy McKinley an die Adresse von Profetkin. Die Kontrolle yes. übers Bein verloren, muss der Kurz zu Boden, er wirkt wieder klar. Die ja, Boxer denken muss in so einer Situation und eben her darf man eben auch das Fighten nicht vergessen, aber das tut er. Im Vorfeld haben wir aufs Brustbein. Dann ist auch der Weg für die Rechte nicht zu weit, dann kann ich was probieren. Für, für den Außenseiter. Mit wilder Entschlossenheit geht er da nach vorne. Den Abdruck, da sieht man, ist der Weg für die Rechte von Tischko so lang, dann steckt er sie gar nicht mehr. Dann geht er ganz zweckhaft nach vorne. Also das war schon mal die richtige Taktik, um die Rechte zu vermeiden. Jetzt fehlt noch die Idee. Aber am Montag beginnt hier ein Tennisturnier und da ist hier eine Hälfte der Arena. Ja, der eine der andere nimmt das dankend an, dreht sich weg. Ja, ja, da und man sieht, wie schwer das ist mit diesen langen die ihm der Wladimir Klitschko da immer so entgegenstellen, solange die Arme frei sind, also solange man theoretisch schlagen könnte. Nimmt Maß für die Rechten. Wie ein Widerstier. Ja, Sekunden. Gekommen. zu schlagen, zumindest nicht mit dem ersten Schlag. Immer über den Körper ran an den Mann. Hier mal die rechte gut gemacht. Der fightet noch. Er ist noch lange nicht am Boden. Wenn ich elf Runden verloren habe, werde ich in der zwölften noch mal alles geben. Soweit ist es noch nicht. Elf Runden hat er noch nicht verloren. So könnte das sein. Aber er muss jetzt nicht mitrechnen. Klitschko fällt da mit der rechten hinterher. Er konnte nicht weg, weil da Louis Pabon ein bisschen im Ring stand. Hat sich trotzdem Povetkin gefährlich machen und auch gefährlich bleiben lassen. Und immer wieder diese Szene. Weil er dann auch offen ist. Und das sind die Momente, auf die Povetkin natürlich wartet. Von ihm ab nur links. Entweder der Haken oder... Der Jab mal wieder. Dann steht, wenn Povetkin weiß, so komme ich ja nicht ran, ich muss irgendwas tun. Wird es immer schwerer, weil der Weg immer länger wird. Gegen Marco Huck, dass er da ein bisschen parteiisch war. Eine, eine Schwellung. Das wird ihn behindern. Problematisch ist es dann. Zehner bei Klitschko und viele Neuner und dann Achter bei Povetkin. So viel kann ich jeden. Wieder Punkt durch der Ted Gimser aus den USA, den Feldman und Philipp Verbeke aus Belgien. Sie gebrauchen. Bei Klitschko vergisst die Rechte, arbeite nur mit der linken Box ihn aus. Oh, links, rechts, guter Treffer und ein bisschen geschubst, was er zu Boden geschubst worden am Ende. Die Schlagwirkung war natürlich vorher da, zumindest die Treffer. Etwas ruhiger und die Rechte nochmal. Oh, oh, da war er. Kurz davor noch mal zu Boden zu gehen, aber er versucht sich auf den Beinen zu halten. Klitschko schlägt noch mal die Linke und versucht ihn den herbeizuführen. Er trifft ihn und Povetkin noch mal am Boden zum zweiten Mal in diesem. Er ist da dran geblieben, hat nicht locker gelassen. Wladimir Klitschko kann sich nicht darauf verlassen, dass der nächste Niederschlag reichen würde. Die Linke war wieder drin. Povetkin kann sich nicht verteidigen. Versucht und Klitschko nimmt Maß. Und die Reflexe sind weg bei Povetkin. Was, was macht Pabon? Er zählt ihn an. Er hatte schon gedacht, er nimmt ihn vielleicht raus. Für Povetkin. Die maximale Negativscore, die man da sozusagen erreichen kann. Louis Pabon mehr zeigen könnte, vielleicht mehr zeigen muss. Und jetzt steht er immer da, ohne zu schlagen. Also... Denkt sich Klitschko, dann schlag ich halt und dann macht Verhältnisse momentan bis zu diesem Zeitpunkt. Verteidigung in dieser Regentschaft. 24. WM-Kampf. Muss mehr tun, Povetkin, wenn er hier noch eine Chance haben will. Der wackelt, der will 
unbedingt noch weitermachen und den einen oder anderen Boxer ja, ausreichend sein. Wieder die Linke. Und das ist Hoppala. Hoppala, weggerutscht und schon stolperte Klitschko oder wurde er getroffen. Da war ein Treffer oben an der Schläfe gerade. Zu da vorne auf die Füßchen und dann ist natürlich schwer wegzukommen. Wieder die Vorhand. Und dann ist die Distanz auf einmal schon wieder zu kurz und dann noch einen Schlag ins Ziel zu bringen. Mhm. Wieder liegen. Aber da ist schon einiges an Pudding in den Beinen. Das war Rutsch. Das kann man machen. Das kann man machen. Punkt abzuziehen, so wie es Luis Pabon. Vladimir ist super Champion der WBA. Aber auch alle ja, anderen Weltmeister, ja. auch beim, bei der WBA, bei der World Boxing Association. Nicht mehr den, ja, sondern nur noch Klitschko oder nur noch Povetkin, je nachdem. Okay, Nochmal ein Treffer zum Ende. Das wäre Shake Hands vor dieser zwölften Runde. Die gelöst am Handschuh von Alexander Povetkin, da wird es gleich eine kleine Verschnaufpause. Was wird Ditschko hier noch investieren? Was wird er versuchen? Ja, er müsste, er sollte, Mayweather Junior, den besten Boxer der Welt. Vladimir Ditschko erhält 75 Prozent davon. Und Povetkin darf sich mit, das reicht für den einen oder anderen Eisbeutel. Naja, wieder ein bisschen... Als sich ein bisschen wegdrehte. Und das zeigt einmal, wer landet den letzten Treffer. Kovetkin probiert es nochmal. Trifft zum Körper. Kampf ist aus. Gewonnen haben. Aber was für eine beherzte Leistung. Ansetzen soll. Linkes Auge, rechtes Auge. Aber der hat gefeitet. Das sah nicht gut aus. Gleich zu Beginn hat er gefeitet. Auch unter den Augen von Nikolai auf den Punktrichterzetteln lesen kann. Also richtig deutlich, da war nur der Punktabzug gegen Klitschko. Ansonsten jede Runde hat er gewonnen. Er nähert sich da den ganz großen Namen. Er ist der 